Ladies and gentlemen, put your digital hands together. So awful. Ladies and gentlemen, Harmon Town is now in session. Please welcome to the stage, Spencer Crittenden. Oh, you can make more noise than that. Yeah, thank you so much. He's worked so hard for you. How are you, man? Welcome back. Good to see you always. Yes. Always good, comfortable to see you. <laughs> Puts me at ease. We're ready to have a good show. I know, full show. Good show yeah. tonight. With Jeff, it's like, what is he about to pull, you know? <laughs> I'm too dumb to be evil. No, no. You just are you're on the side of good. <laughs> and I'm coming out as saying Jeff is not. <laughs> it's about time somebody really fucking pulled Jeff's strings. Yeah. He's not a good dude. <laughs> I do know a really good dude, though. And he is the mayor of Harmontown. Put your hands together, make some noise, slap your dog. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Harmon. Don't slap your dog. Yo. 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 Beat. Rap. Beat. Rap. Rapping. Rap to the beat. My name is MC Rap Beat. I like to rap to the beat when I rap in the street. I like to rap with my hands and also my feet. I like to rap with a Tweety Bird. Tweet, tweet, tweet. I like the snow and the sleet. I'm, don't let it stop me because I'm mailing this sheet to you through a rap shoe that I put on my foot when I bring it to you. I'm a Mr. MC rapping a lot. I changed my name. My name's MC Snot. My name's MC Glaps a lot. My name is Polka Dot. I'm a rapping rapper rapper roo. I'm a getting my energy up before the shoe starts. Okay, all right, good. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. It's important to have me off guard, flat-footed. Yeah. <sighs> Hi, oh, Brandon. Yeah. Thanks for guest controlling. Yeah, Brandon Johnson. So, much. so happy to be here. I'm so sorry Jeff Davis is gone. Uh, where is he? Uh, I don't know. Well, he's, he's going to India. Never mind. I don't know if he's there yet. Yeah, I don't think he's there mind. yet. Too baller. But, Too baller but yeah, it, it, the, here's the never mind. He's flying Emirates. Wow. Yeah, never mind. That dude. Like he's, He said he has a petting zoo in his <laughs> section of the plane. Uh, but I bet it's like two turtles. Yeah, he's like, his life is like what my life would be like if my parents had loved me. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's how he got there. I, I don't know. I, 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 maybe like the indirect result of Drew Carey's parents really not loving him a lot and it trickled down. Who knows? We, we have no idea who to thank. Or we, let's just thank our, our, let's just thank the God of privilege. Privilage. Yes. yes. That's the name. Yeah. Uh, what, but, 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 but. I, I, uh, whatever. <laughs> how 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 have you been? I never ask about you. I've been good. I've been good. There's there's not much to tell. You know, seven dry cleaners. I keep everything legit. You know, uh, my maid won't seem to do her work. But other than that, life is good. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. If the, if those are the only jigsaw pieces you have of Brandon's life, you now like you, that could be anything. So seven dry cleaners, a maid that won't. You, you, we don't know if he's in a giant mansion or a tiny like William Gibson techno coffin. Pretty sure it's a deluxe apartment in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on up. What was the what was the thing in the Jefferson's th theme? It was that beans don't burn in the kitchen. That's right. And what doesn't g burn on a grill? I think something. it's uh, and something else doesn't burn on the grill. Something else yeah. doesn't burn no, on a grill. To, I have to get the whole thing. Are in my you head. offended that I'm coming to you for the answer to no, this? No, no, it's a mystery to all people. Right. This is if a. I, 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 Brandon, I'm asking Brandon as a representative of the '70s, not anything else. This is going to be, I, I feel so bad because so many people are on Reddit are going to be like, oh, oh yeah. it was this. I they need that, though. They need that more than we do. I think, I, think, I, think they, I think they might be calming down now, though. I don't know. Nah. I, I, it's funny how we have moods and our moods affect our perception of the world. Like right now, I feel like the world is uh, more comfortable with racism. Where did I get that? <laughs> Why did I decide that? What, what did I? It's Fatigue. nothing. It's, it's the answer is it's something I ate. It's like not. It's not something I saw. I didn't see somebody come out with a report on Reddit that said we're going to be less sensitive now. I think it was because of, of an epiphany I had. I was eating breakfast with my girlfriend and her dad, and uh, I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what got my mind onto it. But then I, I just started realizing this. You know, the thing about like epiphanies about like how you really. I don't know. The good ones are just like dedoys, you know. They're not when you when you explain them. They're like, yeah, I had that epiphany when I was thirteen, you know. But uh, and I've and, I, and I've had this one. I feel several times, but I really th there's a difference between that and feeling it. I really started to feel at breakfast because I, I, I pulled out my phone and I like wrote it down. It was like a hashtag epiphany in my Bear Notes app. Like 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 I got to remember this epiphany, uh, uh, which was just that. Wait, what's Bear Notes app? <laughs> 
It's a it's my latest it's the latest app I'm trying. It's Sorry, continue. Bear, you can look it up on the App Store. It's just it's based on tags, tag, based. tag clouds instead of. It's weird. It's weird at first, but if you get used to it, it it could be good. I don't know. Why did I key in on that? I don't know. Um, here's my epiphany. So. If you are a machine, or let's say a, uh, an organism, it really doesn't matter. Organisms are machines. Uh, like like y- you're a, you're a you're a structure. You have internal mechanisms. Right. You are capable. You take things in. Yes. And you put things out. And uh, and so flowers do that. Whales do that. The the earth does that. Uh, every every system does that. Every device does that. So we're all we 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 we're, we're all just systems. Each of us individually. So. <clears throat> We take in good shit, we take in bad shit. And we're all different, so there's different shit that's bad to every person. Right. Like, if somebody says the N-word on the freeway at me, it's, it, hits, it, it makes me confused. It, it means something different to you. It's both bad things coming out of that person, but it, I, I go... For, for, there's a lot of like weird confusion at the top of that my process because I'm like is it is their lighting weird in my car what's what, what's with this person are they are they blind what's I don't know what, what, are they are they are they are they on my side and they're are they black and they're Not like they... they're like <laughs> like high fiving me for my awesome driving <laughs> the. The, the, so, so every, it, 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 you, you, the definition of what a bad thing is is subjective. You know, it's like it's not about like oh, some people are in such a good mood that like I don't know. I listen to podcasts where there's people that are, they, they they have problems and there's people that want to help them with their problems. So for those people like bad, what you and I would consider like toxic, that person considers an episode of a podcast. Um, so not to get too derailed with that, but the the larger point being. You have all this shit that comes at you, and it's all good and bad mixed up shit. And then we all have the ability as systems to, first of all, we can, we're constantly growing and reprogramming ourselves, restructuring ourselves, um, just as cells and plants and, and factories and us. And uh, it, this stuff comes in. So we, first of all, the miracles that we do have the ability to take in, like, diarrhea. Like, not literally, but like verbal diarrhea such as I'm spouting right now or really horrible <laughs> toxic like horrible shit like like what you see on Facebook or Twitter or toxicity or someone attacking you in a comment section because you you, you said something wrong or or you know it, 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 bad shit like we we have the ability a filter to 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 turn it into good shit the classic example being that if i have a terrible life if i am a uh, if, I, if, if everybody picks on me, if I feel awful, if I have feelings of anxiety and depression and things uh, because of the shit that's happening to me in my life, but then I write a play about it. Mm-hmm. And then everyone goes and sees the play and walks out feeling really good. Mm-hmm. Not because it's a feel-good play, but because they saw a good play. Like, right. there's catharsis. Like, you could see a depressing play and be like, wow, she, he fucking nailed it. He knows yeah. exactly how depressed I am. And then some of your depression comes up. The b- bottom line being, like, as we all know, you could take in bad stuff and you could put out good stuff. And in fact, that's kind of what we try to do all the time. So like, do, you know, now that times have gotten for most of us very challenging, well, there's a lot of shit in the air. There's a lot of bad stuff coming at us. I just sort of sitting at breakfast and just thinking about all these podcasts I've been listening to where people do like they just, I don't know, there's shit that rolls off their back that I find amazing. Like I was like, how come you don't just tell that person to go fuck themselves? Like why, why, why are you trying to still understand this person and help them with their in-laws for your little podcast? It's not just greed. It's like, it's you're Canadian or something. Like, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, mean, I guess I'm, I should, I should promote the podcast <laughs> I'm describing. Uh, the, it's on the um, uh, 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 Gimlet uh, network. It's called heavyweight. Okay. Uh, it's this guy, jo- John something, and uh, he just he just makes other, his friends and family's business all his business, and he's like a really friendly guy, and he like tries to he tries to resolve uh, long unresolved issues, family members that aren't speaking to each other for decades. Are they on the uh, show? Uh, yeah, the okay. person, the person, a friend or a relative or someone that he knows will will come to him with a something that's been weighing on them. I think that's why it's called heavyweight. And then he'll he'll go, he'll just get up all in their shit and like make phone calls and like arrange meetings. And so it, it, I was just kind of marveling at the guys like 
Because there's people that attack him. There's people that, that criticize him. There's people that are, that, are, that, are, that are engaged in vampiric toxicity towards him or shit. Like, like his famous episode is the one where a friend of his who uh, is a guy who, uh, uh, who gave Moby all of those black people uh, LPs that Moby used to, to launch us into, to, to become like yeah. a billionaire. Yeah. Like, like oh, 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 got yeah. a fish bone on my plate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, like, like, and then Moby, like, 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 like the guy that gave that disc set to him or whatever is also a musician, but is like, you know, he's not Moby and he's not, he's not actively. So there's a whole episode about him like wanting to like, just basically get near, you know, talk to Moby again and kind of like, it was weird and it was awkward and <clears throat> like, and he, like this guy, this guy that like gets involved in this shit, I don't, it's like he's, he, he actively gallops into shit that I, I would be like, no, fuck that. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah. Like, like it, 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 and, and so I was sitting at breakfast kind of like digesting, having binge listened to this guy's podcast. And I was just like, hey, I'm a bad person. Like, I, I don't, like, like, I should be after all I have gotten after all. You know, it's like, why am I still fucking, why am I so sensitive if this guy isn't? And, and I was like, wait, well, well, sensitivity, he's sensitive too. And I was like, ah, sensitivity is different from fucking systemic shutdown. Like, you, you, you can be sensitive to garbage like you can be like that guy's lying that guy's racist that guy's full of shit that guy's kind of full of shit but trying to convince himself he's not full of shit so like you can have a really laser resolution of bullshit detection and that person wants something from me that person's a drag that person's an energy drain um uh you know but you don't need to it's not a superior machine that recognizes that shit and then in response to anything less than perfect goes Pew! right and that's kind of what we're we're doing probably a little too much of is going like oh no 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 you just said that and nope i don't you know um, I, that that either like makes me blow a whistle that like shrieks at the top you know a thousand decibels is that you know if, if that's your function that's good like you're you should stay that sensitive and you should then be the alarm person it's like like but it, you know if you're not that person if that's not your full function if you're not like helping things by blowing that alarm or if it's not making you personally happy too, like there's other shit you could do with all that stuff coming into you too. I don't know. There's this thing, uh, the Jerusalem, the Trump announcement that he's gonna See, make. he took a bad thing and he made a wonderful, go on. <laughs> um, <laughs> where he announced that he's gonna move the US Embassy to Jerusalem and, and, and make a big hubbub. And the world has freaked out about it. To, this is to your point. But the truth is, it takes years for that to occur. He has to get funding. Architects have to drop plans. But people are acting like he's going to do this within the next week. And that's sort of how we've gotten. We've gotten to this place where he says something, somebody says something, we hear something, and we, we automatically freak out, not really looking back and being like, well, no, one, no Girl Scout is going to join the Boy Scouts. The Boy Scouts just said girls could join. Right. And it's because we started off the year so hypersensitive, which is a reaction to any trauma, that now when we hear it's, it's raining, we, we legitimately are like, well, it's probably going to be one of those rains. Yeah. So you're, think, you're exactly right. I think that. to our credit, if we are the left, like, I think, I don't think we're actually, I think a lot of that is like, we're, we just, we're just so like, like frustrated waiting for a referee to blow a whistle that we're just like our boos are getting louder and our like like we're just we're just incredulous and we just want we want at any moment we're like well maybe this is the thing because this is like holy land this is none of his business as I, like 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 i remember in the beginning there was a whole buffet set out there i would like sit there on twitter and write these threads cuz i was trying to like make my religious relatives or people that were christian you know i was trying to go like like he would do, you know, when he missed that prayer breakfast or whatever. Remember when that was a big deal? Yeah. And I was like, I was like, aha! So he missed a prayer breakfast. Now I ask you this: Is this man a Christian? You know, and it, but it, I was, I was, I was really, you know, it was just like, like all we've been doing ever since is like we're just, we're just trying to find his off switch. Yeah. Now our trying to find his off switch is like really making us flail a lot, and I think we should continue to 
try to find his off switch. But I think we should explore more sides of him than obviously the front facing side, because I don't think Donald Trump puts his front off switch on his front facing side. Right. Um, I think he, I, but more importantly, I mean, you going back to my mechanism metaphor, clearly this is a man running on our tears. I mean, like we are putting out like, like terror and sadness and, 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 and outrage. And, and it is, fueling him yeah um and that's fine that doesn't mean to stop being outraged stop crying that doesn't mean go numb it just means we know that he's already playing the game i'm describing he's take he, he's he, he a long time ago either by virtue of sociopathology or some epiphany of his own he had he was like well why should i keep on what what am i supposed to shut down every time my right. mom yells at me am i supposed to shut down every time my dad punches my mom in front of me and looks at me and says if you cry then you're a woman like her i you know i'm just speculating the kind of childhood he probably had given his current pathology i took a little bit of psych in high school uh <laughs> but like like i think i think something blew. college prep what's that <laughs> college prep psychology yeah it was worth it i think it was worth a college credit possibly yeah yeah but i mean this is milwaukee public schools i don't think that <laughs> Or, no, it's brown deer. All right, look, don't write letters. <laughs> I'm not a fraud. L- look into my transcripts. No, you had, a, you had a class in high I took, school. I took, I took a psych class. Yeah, in high school. I believe it was probably right. worth a college credit. I, I was just, no. Okay, it probably wasn't. Okay, <laughs> they, they showed us many, many slideshows about, about things like gestalt. <laughs> right. Uh, I took it, that class, too. So, anyways, this guy either because he's a monster or because he's I'm not even going to say the words, I guess I am, that he's like more evolved. <laughs> like, like, oh. like, 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 like in that respect that he's like, well, what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to like shut down when someone says you're a racist douchebag? Are you supposed to take that information in and through an elaborate system of mirror, turn it into fucking Trump food and eat it. And that's what he's done. He's like, yes, uh, being, I'm hearing I'm racist again. I call that a victory. Da, da, da. He's generating victory for himself. I don't. I don't want to comment. I don't want to be his life coach. But but <laughs> but we are. Most of us aren't dealing with him personally on a day to day basis. And what we are dealing with is like mostly for better or for worse, we're dealing with people digitally. And so I I just have this epiphany in my head where I'm like I have been too defensive, too too fucking like 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 it's like if someone is like feeding into you, they're going like. Hey, you're fat. Season six of Community sucked. Season three of Rick and Morty sucked. Uh, you're you're a cuck. You're uh, uh, I, again with the fat. I can't. You know, I, people aren't really that. I, it's a, uh, 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 I don't know. They they give you they give you they give you chemicals and a little line that they've stuck into you. You're receiving it, and then you just take it in. You process it. There is like, if somebody says, you know. We should make America great again by getting rid of all the brown people. Like, you could process that and go, I think it's great that you think America's great. I love America, too. Oh. <laughs> now. I'm pretty sure you're talking to a person with a mental disability. <laughs> And at which point to continue to take what they're saying seriously? Well, no, we're not. We're not. We're not. Difficult. We're not we, trying. We, we're not wasting time on this person. You're, well, you're, you're correct to correct me well, on that. Once someone calls people brown people, <laughs> I'm pretty much like. Brandon, oh, those were my no. words. I don't know this person. <laughs> I, no, this this I, motherfucker you're, you're, hates no, math. You're, first and foremost, you're correct about that. We're not going to get in arguments with these people. We're not going to try to change them. But certainly but, not. But you know what we're finding? I think is that these people when we do the other thing besides try to change them, which is like, like just kind of like fucking like, I don't know, whatever you call it. Like sometimes I, a lot of times I just block them. I don't know if they might be getting energy from that. They like, are like, like, yeah, like, you should mute them instead. They don't know. Yeah. But if you mute them and they, and they directly tweet you, the mute is no, not function. Not anymore. They upgraded the mute button. As far as I understand, I've never seen anything from a muted person unless I sought it out, but it used to be like that. That's what I do now. Now I have like a thousand muted people. At one point, I had nine eleven muted people. <laughs> I would, I would, I would just mute. I would go through and mute everyone, and then unmute uh, uh, you, uh, Elon Musk. <laughs> people do that, and uh, uh, yeah, like my girlfriend or whatever, you know, like, and that would be called, I guess, Facebook or like, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. 
All right. Well, yeah, there's a little bit. You're you're correct about the overload. There's a bit of an overload, and yeah. we are reacting now instinctually without really, you know. I think we're getting more signals, and if in general, and if more signals are bad, and we're used to less signals, and now we're getting more bad signals, we're gonna kind of frazzle to some extent, right? Yeah, it's, it's tough because you start, you want to, the, the accurate language to use now all has all these horrible connotations, because I want to use a word like trigger, and I want to say like, in other words, kids, if, if, a, if, if a stranger has the ability to trigger you into a negative behavior, are you a superior machine to the triggering machine? Or ha are you losing a fucking AI battle? You know, if someone has the ability to yeah. shut you down, to make you numb, to, to make you simply scream at the top of your lungs and point at the thing and say, bad thing, bad thing. Um, there's, there's gray areas here. I don't want to say that any of those things are necessarily inappropriate responses. But I do... I, I'm going to start asking myself the question like, well, do I want to be a superior machine or not? A superior machine is like, like I'm taking in a little bit of nitrogen, a little bit of oxygen, a little bit of carbon dioxide, a little bit of carbon monoxide, a little bit of uh, aluminum. Like it, it's all this, like this person just saying some random fucking second amendment, like uh, a justifying thing, or he's a flat earther, or he just doesn't like me because I'm fat, or I said something bad about Jim Henson once. Um, and, and they're just trolling me or they're just like barfing up on me. It's like the barf, if I'm a superior machine, I there's even if it's one part per billion, there's like nutrition in the barf, and I just put it into my little barf uh, yeah, processing like stomach, and then the rest passes through me. Well, no ish. So you don't want the if if it's a white suit, everybody's born with a beautiful white suit. We all get our white suit. It's three piece. It's gorgeous. Yeah. You want to try and keep it clean. You want to try and take care of it. Dry clean it when it needs to get dry clean. And if somebody's flinging mud at you, you don't want to keep visiting that joint. Because it's about keeping the suit clean. The same thing goes for your mind and your spirit. Yeah, shit. well, you move, you move the, the mechanism that you are. If you're in a place where you're, where all the cords connecting to you are 99% barf and 1% nutrition, yeah, you probably like you've probably picked unless you figure out how to now take on a new organ or something that actually turns barf into sunshine or I say that once you have barf, you identify that it's barf and you step around it. You don't even try and get the or, nutrients from Or if from you barf. figure out how to turn barf into Dramamine. I don't know. And then, I think you, and then you put Dramamine out, and it goes back around the people, and they, don't, and they start barfing less. And then it's like, if that, if that is your job, you know, like that, that's a thing that you are good at and you enjoy doing. You go stand in that place, and you collect barf, and then you, like, you put out this other chemical, and then the barf recedes, and people that are passing by go, why are you doing that? Don't feed the trolls. And you go, like, I'm not. I'm reducing barf. Like, you, you'll, you'll thank me later, or, or it's just something I enjoy doing. If you don't enjoy doing it, I think most importantly, like, yeah, you fucking, like, you know, you move, you move that factory to a place where there's the, the compositions yes. are better enabling you to put out good things. Yes. For sure. We can both agree on that. I just think there are some people out there. I think we could have some of these trolls on our side if they could start to understand that there's like a way people like people. people <laughs> there are people that, 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 that troll because they don't trust. They don't trust dichotomy. They don't trust systems that tell them there's a difference between good and bad and that there's only good and or bad. And that those people, they they are they are able to be hypnotized by the bad guys faster than they're able to be yelled at enough by the good guys to pick a side. I think that people who troll are speaking a language that they are used to speaking uh, because they, they come from negative situations. They don't even know that they're necessarily being negative. I think that if you are a machine, maybe you want to operate efficiently and that fucking with these trolls is inefficient and takes the energy from your machine, you know? Because I think that you don't, I'm not trying to save souls necessarily. There's there's a bunch of people that are 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 worth saving. So I I take that level of compassion that you're expressing for these trolls, and I give it to people who are actually fighting for good. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, well. In that the, in that example, then it's like you're yeah. So you're what well, you're saying. I Brandon Johnson. My philosophy represented like a 2D overhead map where there's like lichen over here and trolls over here and like like there's a bridge like, sunflowers over here and all that stuff. It's like you're you're really you're 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 in a really specific position where you put yourself where you're able to expose yourself to the ingredients you need 
to to then you're and then you're pumping help to the people that you are saying deserve it you know that need it that are like oh if that person needs like me for instance if i don't have you in my life i'd i'd be my altitude would be lower you oh, pump thanks. me with levity chemicals it's trying to make me cry <laughs> trying to make me be a bitch up here i see you it's not gonna work I, I mean, this, 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 this epiphany was, was, is useless to you. I knew that coming in. Like, no, I, no, this no, is the epiphany I that I it. needed. No, no, no. I mean, I'm saying, like, you're not, you're not somebody that's functioning at a low enough level to need this epiphany. Like, you, uh, you, the things that you've said in the past on the show when we've gotten into this area, like, I, I know you're, I know you, 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 you get this. Like, I, I, I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm getting there now because I'm like, I, I just, like, I've been to, I, I just, it's, it's like, like, like why, why am I letting so many things in an uncontrollable world control me? Well, this is the thing. I think as we get there, because we're always getting there, regardless of what level, one of the things that we pass on is the information. So one of, I'll make this real quick, is that we've had to all mobilize, but the older people have had to talk to the younger people about how to do it because they've been fighting for 40, 50 years, right? So like anybody who's 30 and under didn't know how to get together and rally and do all this shit. So I kind of feel like it's everybody's duty to say, this is the part of the journey that I would do like this so that you can continue to fight because you get this thing called oppression fatigue where you're really tired of taking in all the bad shit and listening and trying to save puppies and people at the same time. And you get this roadmap that says, okay, so this is how you do this. And one of the ways that I always think you do it, just my two cents, having fought for a long time is you really don't spend time on the people who have very clearly executed that they're not gonna come around. Um, and you really spend more time on the people that are working hard in the streets to do what they do. It's like you take that compassion for a troll, like I said, and you, you give it to a mother of three who's taking a bus every day, and then you really do see it go farther. Like if I save a troll, I don't know that I'm helping anybody. That motherfucker but might like still be you, selfish. You aren't even <laughs> engaging with the troll. You're engaging with like the shark fin that the troll is putting above the water, and they're only putting it above the water because the rest of them is like safe tucked away and is not in, in being engaged with like that's what they come for is just to like do this kind of shark thing or if we look at them if we look at them as machines because it'll make the metaphor easier sure. for me like the the the, the 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 there's a some of the the bad guys are like one of their techniques is to just spray gas yeah. into the air you, that where you, like Joker. no interaction with them whatsoever and no relationship with them and no desire for them to be one thing or another you're just breathing farts yeah. everywhere you go <laughs> you go to Albertsons and everyone's in a bad mood because just collectively everybody is convinced that the fucking that 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 everyone hates each other in general i mean this is just a function of the new the new uh, thought wars that we're having, the meme wars. The, yeah. is, like this is the, we, the 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 former Soviet Union like t tested this and demonstrated it on all their little satellite states that tried to break ranks. We watched them hack and fucking troll them and say, "You're having a civil war down the street. Your black people don't like your white people. It's happening down the street from you." And and, and, and the people in our in their homes going like, "I don't hear any mortar fire." Right. Like, and, and it's just massive confusion. Gas. It's just gas. You didn't yep. have to ask for uh, so, so. And so I guess part of my epiphany is like, OK, so so the air has changed. Yes, it's changed. Yeah. OK, so am I a person who's going to go buy a gun? Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, but now that I'm thinking about it, like that was that was my reaction to worrying that people were going to die, worrying that my family was going to be safe, worrying that I couldn't take care of my dogs, my housekeeper, my neighborhood, myself. Yeah. Like, I let that fear make me go put money into a mechanism of hatred and violence. And it's because my gauges and pistons and things were poorly designed for this change in chemical compounds in the, in the, in the atmosphere. Not poorly designed. They just needed... We just gotta, needed upgrading. We, we need they, to add some some I, I, filters. Feels like I don't I, I don't like the word filter because it's part of what the bad guys are doing. Like it's a, it's a more like take it all fucking in, take it in. Uh, 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 Michael, it's me, Kit. This is a Knight Rider reference. It was a show. To, it, Michael, uh, Kit says, 
to, we're, 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 the, I'm detecting a change in the atmosphere. There's just like, 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 take it in and fucking study it. Yeah. Like, oh, there's a 10% increase in nitrogen and a decrease in oxygen. Okay, I'll work on a schematic for a part of my engine that will that will take to, to be nitrogen powered that'll generate more oxygen. Or right? so it's like even if that just means like, yeah, you just. You, 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 yeah, like, 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 it, 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 it starts with self-examination, and 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 then it's awareness. It's like be aware of what's happening to you. It's 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 time to to check in with yourself about how you're feeling when you're feeling it, and oh. don't be afraid to say I feel sad. I feel like I want to give up. I feel so angry. I feel I want to smash somebody's face in. But then, like, you don't have to do any of that stuff to feel it. You just examine those feelings, and then you like, like, have a board meeting inside your heart and go. Okay, so we're taking we're, we're we're taking stuff in through our intake valves that are making us violent mm -hmm. and fearful and numb. Um, let's uh, let's figure out. Let's just be aware of that. Yeah. For a week. I wish there was somebody in the room who knew a little bit about what we were talking about. You, do you think there is? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. I, I think you're recommending a, a, a guest order swap. Let's but. let's get down with Ben Nelson. See what's going on. All right. Well, let's, let's have our swap. first our first guest come up, uh, Ben Nelson, and we'll I'll, I'll tell, tell you what he's doing in a second. Awesome. Oh yeah. I guess the reason I thought Brandon was recommending a guest swap was because I don't know that Ben Nelson is. I only know what Ben Nelson's objective is in a very very overview fashion. Your your part your 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 project is a thing called Project Minerva. The Minerva Project, yeah. And uh, give us the fucking Wikipedia <laughs> paragraph that I read. <laughs> or I will. So M Minerva is, is effectively a way to create uh, a university the way it's supposed to be. So basically, everything that universities say they do, right? teach people how to think critically, teach people how to problem solve, teach people how to understand other people, interact effectively, communicate effectively, Turns out they don't do any of those things. Mm -hmm. we the do. college, oh. the, the idea of like college uh, class shopping carts and stuff, isn't that like related to the decline? Because it's like not about a curriculum anymore. It's about selling these digital products that are actually supposedly pieces of an education. Yeah, exactly. Well, and, and, and you know, it's not even that anymore because what they're really selling isn't education, right? I mean, if, if you think that universities are actually about education, if you think that people choose universities based on education, why are they spending so much money on lazy rivers and campuses and tanning beds yeah. and sports teams? They are, in fact, right? selling you, first of all, well, they're, they're approaching you as a family. Right. They, they need the kid engaged. They need the kid to say, I want to go to that school because I might get late and I might have fun. I might not kill myself. And they, but simultaneously, the more important part of the family, the parents need to go, oh, and after that, job placement. Yeah, job placement. And, I think I was and, wrong. I think I was wrong from your reaction. Yeah, yeah, you kind of yeah. did so, the so I think I think there's one other thing, which is, you know, the colleges sell, different packages to different students. And one of the things that colleges don't talk about, especially the, the Ivy League, the highly selective schools that claim that they're need blind, claim that, oh, we don't really look at how wealthy you are, which is a total lie. They sell a very different package to rich kids than they do to everyone else. And the problem is rich kids, the top 1%, are 50% of the students going to these schools. 50%. right? And you can't do that if you're really need blind. So for them, the pitch is very, very different. The pitch is look at the theme park that you're going to be going to. And yeah, you know, you got courses and this and that, and you can choose whatever you want. But look, between you and me, slash between everyone, once you get in, there are no Fs. You take whatever courses you want. There's no curriculum. You're guaranteed a diploma. Is that really a thing that's able to be transmitted, dog whistled, if you will, to families? Like, for instance, if someone was absolutely 100% observably dyslexic, which is not a crime. Mm -hmm. Geniuses are dyslexic. But Absolute, someone who, is, my father. who has not treated it at all mm -hmm. um, and is therefore functionally illiterate, cannot read a piece of paper publicly without fucking up the words, cannot form sentences without confusing us. Yeah. Um, and then, like, like, but I still want to be president. Yeah. Uh, like there are, you're saying that, because this is what boggles my mind. I yeah. thought that there were, I mean, the, the, you, said, you said no Fs. The, 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 that's actually somehow broadcast out to the families? Like your kid won't get an F here. Yeah, so, uh, so, so one shockingly underreported story from a couple of years ago um, was it happened at the University of North Carolina. 
So University of North Carolina, the oldest pu public university in the United States. Old Miss Old Daisy. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> My alma um, mater. Yeah. <laughs> so University of North Carolina um, uh, discovered, shockingly, three years ago, to nobody's knowledge, that for the previous 18 years, they invented classes that didn't exist, put them in a course catalog, didn't bother assigning a room to them, because they never met, and they were specifically in place to enable several of their athletes to get phantom A's. Right. Now, when this wow. was discovered, it was some secretary deep in the bowels of the organization that took all the blame, and everyone else, the head of the sports department, the provost, the president, no one knew, no one knew, right? And when it was investigated by the accreditors, the people who are supposed to actually be watchdogging these folks, they said, eh, you shouldn't do this again. 18 years, they gave away fake degrees. Now, people look at this and they say, oh my God, that's, that's like flat out fraud. And was that all athletes? Because I feel like I've seen, I, I saw Johnny B. Good with, uh, huh. uh, uh, what's his name, from, from, from whatever, God, Anthony Michael Hall. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Anthony. Uh, you did great in uh, season two. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, we, we, we're, I feel like that's been like, since I was a kid, that has always been an athlete thing. That, like oh, a, it's much more pervasive, but, but and, and that's the real problem. So the problem is that other universities have, you know, who, who looked at UNC and, and just passed judgment and said, oh my God, uh, you know, horror, the horror of that. What they've done internally, like if you look at, at some of the most selective universities in the country, they, what they do is they just don't issue Fs to anybody, right? So uh, I'll give you the, the, the story. A very, very, very selective university. You've all heard the name. I will, I will protect the guilty um, by leaving out their name. I had a, a friend who was a, a teaching assistant there. Harvard. And I'm not going to say exactly where, but <laughs> it you rhymes know. with Harvard. <laughs> it rhymes with Mayo. Right. So, uh, so the very short version is that the, their their rule was that you basically you only got grades based on tests, and if you miss miss uh, two of the tests, it's 100 percent the final. And there was a girl who missed both of the midterms, and then skipped the final. Okay, didn't take any of the tests. So when it was ti time to give her grades, the TA gave her an F. And the professor, when he looked at the F, he said, uh, who, who got an F? And he said, this is this girl who didn't take a single test. And he said, yeah, that's a C plus. What? C okay. plus? Now, is this a, so, so that I, happened to me, I think, in astrology. I uh, yeah. I definitely got an F on a test, and it was like C, and it was like, well, yeah. that didn't that didn't happen. Yeah. Um, what, okay, so in that example, that's mm -hmm. a real life example, real life but example. it's an anecdotal example. But so yeah. so so now, just tell us, like, wh why? Who is why, that right. girl? Why why is that professor doing that? Well, uh, he did that because actually the rules of the university. Uh, so in in elite institutions, when you want to have half of your students to be rich you're going to have to make a lot of exceptions, even at the very best universities. God, that makes fucking sense. damn it. I went to fucking Marquette, and I had to drop out. I got an F in English because they busted my you, you balls. Didn't, you, didn't go to a, so you didn't go to an elite university. Every time I cut university. class, my yeah. grade yeah. went down. I think I was yeah. like, this is harder than high school. Well, so, so actually, that's the sad part, because the higher you climb, the more this grade inflation is occurring. Oh, my. Always wow. knew it. Yeah. Never heard it from a yeah. qualified yeah. individual. Yeah. Yeah. Now, does this have anything to do with loans? Well, not so much because these schools don't really give out loans, okay. right? Because, and especially to the students that, you know, can afford to pay $70,000 a year. Who can do that? Half of their students. Wow. The That's 1%. how bad it is. The fucking idiots. We've raised a nation of rich oh. idiots. Wow. Privileged rich idiots. Privileged. Well, and, and, and not yeah, necessarily smarter well, or better equipped to go that. into the workforce? No, not at all. I mean, in fact, if you, if you look at how employers rate the quality of graduates from universities, it's abysmal. Abysmal. 96% of chief academic officers at universities say that they prepare their students well for the job, right? The job force. The, this is what parents really care about. 11% of employers agree. Right. Eleven wow. percent. Yeah, I mean, I think that's been that's been like the you know, last ten years or right. so. There's like that bubble burst where right. somebody right. bothered, uh, as with Enron, somebody finally said, "Come on, right? We need to see a ledger." Right. And then after a lot of hemming and hawing, it's yeah. like, yeah, no, no one gets a job that went to college, and basically. You, but however, there's a meta channel to that, which is. If you can afford to send your kid to Harvard, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm going to get a little uh, classist <laughs> here in the opposite direction. Uh, if you can afford to send your kid to Harvard, 
you and you don't send your kid to Harvard, you're uh, you're kneecapping your kid. Because your kid's a member of the one percent. He's 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 garbage larva. He's 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 <laughs> he's blue blood Mayflower fucking yeah. pa- parasitic so, uh, DNA, and he needs his Harvard UV ray, yeah. his tanning booth to pass through, so he can be a baked in Harvard fucking moron and go get his oil wells and his fucking that, fucking fucking shit. <laughs> back. So Dude, mad I got good news for you. Okay. I got good news for you. That's a myth. Okay, okay. Okay. All right. So 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 they actually somebody did that study. They looked at people accepted by Harvard, right? All the people who accepted by Harvard, and they looked at the people who chose not to go and compared them to people who went. Turns out that if you are from the top four of the five socioeconomic uh, strata, right? So basically mm-hmm. the top 80%, right? It makes zero difference whether or not you chose to go to Harvard or to state school. Mm-hmm. Where it does help, and it does help, is that if you come from the 20% poorest households in the country, which make up a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of, uh, of Harvard students, those students actually do have some better uh, future earnings, et cetera, if they went the Harvard path versus not, but it's not that much. And yeah. it's usually because it's, they started out at zero. Correct, because they started, they started with a huge, huge, huge amount, of, uh, amount of, of downside, and they do meet some people that will help them out. So that does help, but guess what? What makes you successful in life, and this is actually a a damnation of universities because I don't think it should be this way, but what makes you successful in life is just how good you are, right? But what universities should be doing is they should actually be adding value. They should actually be teaching to do those things. There should be places where you go you, and you go, you I don't know, I play about. a little bit of piano, but I, 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 I've, I've always liked English class. I came here to be a journalist major. And they go, wrong, you're Billy Joel. Yeah. You know, and they funnel and they make you into Billy Joel. That's what a, sure. any school should be. That's yeah. what any household should be. Yeah. Your kids should be born with proclivities that are natural, interests that are natural. Sometimes those are contrasting. You put a piano in front of your kid. You put a, you put a, a football in front of your kid. You put a, 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 a lock pick in front of your kid, maybe uh, just in D and D terms, maybe you? they're going to be an expert thief. <laughs> yes, uh, and 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 they respond to stuff and they don't respond to stuff, you know. And you break all, by the way, as a subset of that, you know, you break all gender norms and, and all that stuff because you know, to, regardless of what we think about this stuff, anyways. But I, 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 who cares? I'm patting myself on the back for what am I barfing you at? <laughs> at you. I, I, I'm very curious about one thing because I just want to make sure I got the picture here because yeah. that girl in that example. When that professor says that F is actually a C plus, is he saying that because of that girl's background, no. or, is he, or is it just because there's because a rule? Of that so, the rule so the rule, so, are, so, the, so the poor kids are benefiting from the no F process. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Everybody goes to they're customers. School, benefit. They're customers, right? So and, nobody wants to get a right. cold happy. Well, the mail. teachers and, they get rated on how good their students bingo. do. Right? Bingo. And so, and so, in order to give the girl an F, there is a way to give her an F. After she missed the first midterm, they had to call her into a teacher student conference and have a written down. Uh, corrective action plan, even though in the rules she could have missed the midterm. Then, after she missed the second midterm, they had to bring her back in and have her sign on a different corrective action plan because the first one clearly didn't work. And then, and only then, if she then misses the final, just doesn't show up, then they can give her an F. People don't bother doing it. Mm. Wow. Right? And so, but, but there's one other thing that, that universities should be doing, which is what you were talking about at the beginning of the show, which is those filters... Right, the, the ways to train your mind to deal with what comes at you, that is the job of universities. Yeah. That is the definition of higher education. Universities don't do that. And instead we're giving C pluses to absolute morons that can go on to become legislators. And we're giving also, uh, look, I'll say it. I'm going to sound like one of the bad guys. We're giving safe, safe spaces to kids that complain that Catcher on the Rye made them yep. uncomfortable because it has the word fag in it. Absolutely. Well, this seems all pretty terrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish there was so. someone here <laughs> that had a plan because we're good at complaining, but if only there was someone, help me. Uh, There's got to be a better way. <laughs> I want to know how we Mr. got Lee. here and where we're going. <laughs> so, so Where so, are we going? So we, we believe that we've sketched out something that, that works. You so, and your improv troupe. Right, exactly. Right. <laughs> we, 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 you know, we have a whole group of people now. Um, so we actually started a new university. We started a new university program uh, that's actually part of the uh, KGI, which is one of the Claremont Colleges here in Southern California. Um, and our students go through a, a, a completely reimagined four-year undergraduate curriculum. It's accredited. It's very, very selective, very hard to get in. But unlike the traditional profile of, of other universities, we just choose not to discriminate. 
It was an odd choice. And so <laughs> we, we, ch we charge Even if they're black? It, it, it across the board, right? You mean Zero you don't discrimination. discriminate among the different kinds of black people for the black people program? Uh, there's no, there's no black person program. At, uh, what well, about how you the tell the black hygienist? students from the? We don't. So, so here, so here's the crazy repair. thing about what we do. Here's the crazy thing about what we do. We have no quotas. We have no buckets. We have no slots. We don't say, oh, you have to compete for this, you know, position. If you qualify for a program, it's very hard to qualify. But if you qualify, you get in. Okay. And we charge for tuition fees, room and board, the whole thing, less than $30,000 a year. So less than half of what the Ivy League charge, right? Which is 60 to 70,000 now. And despite the fact that we charge less than half, 80% of our students can't afford it. Right. What's a state school cost? About the same. Okay. And that's subsidized by the government. We're not. I'm sorry, okay. I've got to pick my nose right on camera because it's just there's a trapdoor bugger and look, I can either live with it or yeah. I can fucking confront it. I have it. to do something about it. Now it's gone. <laughs> I'll let I'll let Reddit show that in replay. I, I picked I picked I picked my nose. Door. I do it with my thumb. That's why my nose looks like Harrison Ford's at forty four. <laughs> now would a would a guy like me make it into your program? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so I, I want to try to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to recap what you said so that we can try. Because I'm dumb and drunk, and um, you're saying that you. Uh, because first of all, uh, you, you haven't built a brick and mortar uh, building yet. Where is you're saying you're using existing universities, but you started a program. We started an undergraduate program. Yeah, and what we do is rather than using kind of a campus-based philosophy, we use a city-based philosophy. So our students, they actually spend their first year not in Southern California, but in San Francisco. And they live in a residence hall in the middle of the city. And then the next three years, they travel as a group. They live in six different countries all over the world. What? So they go from San Francisco, they go to Seoul, Hyderabad, Berlin, Buenos Aires, London, Taipei, and they come back to San Francisco to graduate. Are you a Bond villain? Huh? Well, I, I'm not, but perhaps our students will be Bond heroes. <laughs> Finally, but, they're placed in a yeah, pit yeah, and yeah. a broken pool cue is put <laughs> between them. The one, the one super student that emerges from that pit goes to the moon. Actually, um, gets to go to Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I just want no, to because I, 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 please forgive me. I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm saying. So you're saying it's so hard to understand. This, it's, yeah. a, it's a program. It's not a school. It's not a geographically located thing. It's a program. It's geographically located. It's just not located in a campus. It's located in the city. Okay, and, right. and, but but everywhere these people are going, the faculty like there's not you're not you're not so we have you're not invading existing schools and no, saying let us invading. piggyback on your infrastructure. That's right. That's you right. have your own teachers, we have your own, own curriculum. Our professors, our own curriculum, and the curriculum the way it's structured is in the first year they spend the entire first year training their minds. They, they learn four systems of thought. We're talking about complex systems, basically. We're talking about, at the beginning, how, how we are all complex systems, right? Anywhere from uh, people to animals to... Uh, the first to, year is how to think. It, the first year is systems of thinking, right? So how to use logic and reasoning and statistics. How to look at the world around you and understand how things work when data isn't clear. How to think about unintended consequences and effective interactions. How to think about how to communicate effectively. So one of the things that you were talking about is one of the things we actually teach. It's called audience, right? Hashtag audience, which is a habit of mind to understand who it is that you're talking to before you start talking, right? To actually understand how are they going to receive what I'm saying? And, and by the way, there's the corollary to that, which is, why are they saying those things to me? What are they actually, what is the question behind the question or the statement behind the statement? So that's like communication theory and so stuff. So that's part of communi uh, effective right. communication. Well, that seems like that's compatible with modern problematization. <laughs> yes. I, uh, to, 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 uh, the, uh, to, to pronounce it in the original French. <laughs> <laughs> Problematization, uh, which can be so, which which I I heard a student telling me, explaining to me about that you're picking apart things, and then I looked it up. Like, what is this? It's like a, it's like a sort of digestive process of any yes. piece of information. You can just look around your world and start corroding it. With, Correct. <laughs> which which right. and you don't yeah. like the word filter, which is right. I think about it as lenses. You, we give you a hundred different lenses to sharpen your view of the world. Don't lenses filter light? Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's oh, true. Shit. They okay. focus, they focus, they focus light, right? Okay, I'm just saying. Don't, but don't it is fantastic to, yeah, because I feel like if, we, if there's one thing off of, I'm Generation X, I'm the David Cross, Jeanine Garofalo, uh, uh, Brandon Johnson generation. I, uh, I, 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 I floated my boat for the longest time, Brandon and I have talked about this, how our generation kind of, 
we 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 weren't like millennials however we were we you know lazy is lazy like we learned how to be anti corporate yeah. when we were 25 we learned how jamba juice is just fucking bullshit <laughs> it's all sugar you know every everything with a everything with a little c in a circle or a tm on it is bullshit and everything corporate is bullshit money's bullshit and all this stuff we, we we but we didn't and then the millennials started rubbing us the wrong way cuz they're like i don't know i love recycling I mean, if the president tells me to do it my mom's my best friend and, and we're like these people are going to be fascists if they intersect with the right president and i am on record in this podcast as saying that if you can bear it scroll back through this horrible fucking podcast however i also went and bought a gun and things didn't go my way i've also said horrible things and made rape jokes all right so don't go back don't go back um but 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 like it, it the, the the place where we intersect is i think i think like 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 our generation my generation is like we it, that's like a little bit of paprika a little pepper it's, it's like could we please just change lenses constantly and always look at everything and see who's gaining right. and who's losing and question everything right. and kind of like like be jaded about it a little bit absolutely um and but, but, but you don't need to be jaded you have to actually just look at it you actually have to get down to the to the core of what the issues are right and i think that's actually where our generation was we were primed i think probably this is why you know i came up with this concept which is when i went to college that's what i was primed for I was primed for exactly that. I wanted to go to college. Well, in movies and TV, that's what it always is. It's, right. a, it's always like these crazy thematic yes. John Hausmans at the front going, right, exactly. I expect <laughs> you to work so much harder than you ever. Yeah. And, and then like the people turn their papers in right. and it's like, I'm so, look, I'm sorry, professor, I just didn't agree with you on this one. And that is why you got an A. <laughs> you know, like everything, like colleges as depicted right. in right. our culture right. are these places where you're fucking, the bullshit yeah. starts off campus. Yeah. That's why Kent State, that's why they, that's why Kent State tipped off. It's like they fucking invaded the, the, right. the goddamn uh, uh, Pentagon of, of culture. Our children, our youth, like we, you're allowed to protest. You're allowed, and they sent the National Guard onto a campus, and someone got shot. And it was like, this is over now. Yeah. You fucked up. Just as when a journalist getting shot in the Roaring Twenties was the reason organized crime got shut the fuck down. You yeah. shot a journalist. It was like always there was this respect for yeah. these things that uh, that that should have kept me safe. <laughs> uh, this is a heavy podcast. Really. No, Very it's a heavy, selfish yeah. one. It's, it's where I come to like, like I just plea with the cameras. I go, can you it's hear the shelling? So someone send me blood. Uh, but, but I just please, wanna, someone I, send us blood. <laughs> what are you, Dan? Somebody, I'm an O positive. I, you know what? I, I, th I think you should be a little more O negative sometimes. That's the problem with your generation. <laughs> uh, the uh, so 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 uh, how, how, how okay. I, I want to. I want to continue to talk to you. We have a full show tonight. We've also got. I think somebody that's going to blend very well with you. I think either that or we're going to get the tanks are going to roll through the building once <laughs> once the two of you are together. But uh, um, I just want to like like just a little personal background. Yeah. Come on, come on, Ben Nelson. Stop avoiding intimacy. <laughs> who who are you? <laughs> How'd you end up on this war path? Um, How did I end up on the war path? It was uh, it was pretty simple. I mean, I was um, so went to college idealistic. 18-year-old, uh, assuming John Hausman will be teaching me all of my classes. and But um, also that you'd be allowed to be John Cusack in A Sure Thing. Uh, <laughs> that was the other half of the college yeah. dream was that you could go, you know what, I'm a fucking whiz English major. I'm going to I'm gonna s skip the midterm, but I'm going to make it up on the, you know, it's like you, you, you cut classes and all that. That was oh. part, it was like, you're grown up now. You're not a high school student anymore. You're an adult. You make your choices. And then like a lot of college dramas would feature that moment where the kid would have to come to terms. It's like, yeah, but you're scheduling your time and you're picking yeah. your priorities. Yeah. And in fact, I found that I, I could schedule my time completely because I never needed to go to class because the classes were, I mean, they just read books out loud to you and I could read them on my own. Right? Yeah. Um, that's what my college experience was yeah, like. Yeah. And, and I didn't like that. No. I actually wanted to learn something. I right? could just buy a textbook. Exactly. Right. And so I, I thought that, you know, choice and in college should be made when I was ready for it. Right. I'm actually not a big fan of choice right at the beginning yeah, because I'm time. still a kid. Yeah, fresh, right? Freshman still, year. I have no at, idea at, what at I'm doing college at that should point. be. High school's over, right. you piece of shit. <laughs> and, and part of that should be uh, like the mama cat like drops a crippled mouse, like not a dead one. Yeah. Disabled. Meaning yeah. Yeah. you can you're going to you can go do stand up Wednesday nights. <laughs> right. 
Right. And then your grade's going to lower yeah. it down just a Correct. little bit. You're going to get enough you can, free exactly. agency. You can make those choices. Exactly. But you I'm still just saying I should have I should have I should have been a I should have had better grades at Marquette. <laughs> if there's one thing we can establish, I should For not have record. gotten an F in English. For the record. It is I've been walking around that. I need to go to Gimlet Media uh, with my for a heavyweight episode about how I need to confront my uh, college TA. All right. Why did you? Well, real quick, why did you get an F? It was a systemic thing. Was it, like were you, you not literally? They tell you you your grade drops a grade level if you if you skip a class. Okay. So right there, oh. I'm dead. Wow. Yeah. Because that's, I, that's amazing. I never had that. So it wasn't then, about skill. They were it also was, starting a new thing attendance. called cooperative education, which is where the class shows up. There's a TA. The TA breaks everybody into groups. Boom. And the group gets a grade, shares a grade. Oh, yeah. Right, sure. So that was very offensive to my young, yeah. like, yeah. if if you had transplanted me into today, like, I was, you know, like, yeah, I was, like, I, I was in di- at risk of yeah, alt-right, but, you know, like, but, but, <laughs> indoctrination. But, 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 see, but see, here's, here's what I would make the argument. I would make the argument that if, if your university did its job, you wouldn't have missed any classes. You would have gone to class because it would have actually, you would have seen your mind develop. You'd say, oh, my God, I am smarter this week than I was last week, and I'm not going to miss out on that opportunity. And sometimes you do have to put in some structure. The problem is when you put in structure, and then the university doesn't deliver. you got to show up, and then you show up, and you're like, why you show the hell am I showing up? And then your TA the is point? reading Ray Bradbury right, exactly. and, and, and like texting while you sit in a circle of desks with... Uh, all your fellow freshmen going, I don't know what you want to do. I don't know what you want to yeah, do. Exactly. Exactly. What if we wrote a paper about licorice? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, so, okay. So, not to avoid intimacy, I, I came up with this idea when I was a freshman. Basically, how to fix the curriculum at my university. And I spent four years trying to argue for people to listen. Nobody cared. Oh, they must have loved you. Uh, no, they didn't even <laughs> care. They didn't even care. And now so, that I'm here, yeah. I'd like to put up some wallpaper. <laughs> 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 so you know, uh, so I, I tried for four years and I gave up. And, wow. and And I said, "What? What? What can I do? I couldn't do anything. I was on all these committees and all the rest. Nothing could happen. So I gave up. And I said, "You know, I think education is kind of important. I, I think it's kind of important for universities to actually educate students. And my guess is this is going to have some bad effects in the real world. But who knows, right?" Who, what do I know? I'm an you know uneducated 21 year old. Uh, I just I have a university degree. So I went out into the real world, and then I encountered human beings, um, and I encountered human beings in positions of pretty dramatic levels of decision making, and they were intelligent, high IQ. They were well meaning. They wanted to do good things, and they were making awful, awful decisions that impacted a lot of people's lives. Right? I saw it in the working world, the corporate world. People were like, making decisions, and companies were going out of business and making boneheaded moves. I saw it, obviously, in politics. I saw it everywhere. And it just got worse and worse and worse. And by the way, it wasn't even a, a partisan thing. Right? I, could, I could even track when, you know, you know, and era has gone by when you look fondly back at any any you know government uh, that we had over the past 20 some years uh, and and you say well look you know you, you had congress controlled on the right on the left etc you never look back and say oh my god boy wasn't that like a look at what you know the house of representatives was able to do in 1996 or what did the senate were able to do in 2002 or 2007 these were generally not well functioning organizations right and and they've, they've just gotten progressively worse over time. You are an educational activist. Yeah, basically. absolutely. You're which a disruptor. Not, no. no. Is, we don't, you're don't an obstructionist. We don't, we don't believe in disruption. Which we want to reform. <laughs> we want to reform. Yeah, that's super yeah. interesting because nobody is standing up for the rest of us in terms of getting educated. And it does seem as though universities have gotten more about, can we do business in terms of uh, agriculture? Mm-hmm. If, can we do uh, um, medicine? Yep. Can we do law? Um, can we do business? They don't do architecture. They don't do dance. They don't do art anymore. They don't do any of the things that really fuel those three things that I listed and, initially. And, and, mo- and again, from our perspective, totally right. And the most tragic, they no longer do general education. So General education is the most important role of an undergraduate degree. 
That's why it's called an undergraduate degree. It's supposed to train the mind so that when you then figure out what you want to do, you go to get a graduate degree or you go into the workforce or what have you and then use the general systemic thinking, those general ideas. This all the world. goes back to capitalism because, well, that's an easy thing to say, but it's a, it, it, because it goes back to when I'm 15 years old in 1989 uh, in, in, in Brown Deer, Wisconsin, like, it's happening around me. I'm not aware of it yet, but looking back on it, I'm aware that like programs are being lifted and pulled. Now, some of them are, uh, well, actually, at that time, all the programs that were being lifted and pulled were like trade programs. Right. Music. My best friend, Dave Friedel, yeah. who, uh, who's great. been on the podcast and stuff, he was a huge beneficiary of the, um, uh, just the, 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 there was a, there was a program at my high school where if you were really interested in food service, you could take classes at our high school and then there was an internship and there was all these things and he was like one of the last people through that shoot and ha and was able to he's he's not now uh, Wolfgang Puck he's now a fucking coder he he and, and a assist whatever he's got a he's got a, a a digital job he's but the but he was able to not slip through the cracks and fall into fucking hell yeah. um because his, you know, he wasn't a guy, he had a different kind of, he, he didn't excel on tests or in geometry or whatever, but he was fucking nailing it in these food service classes. And there was programs in every public high school. There would be like tendrils going into, oh, you want to, oh, you're a dirt ball. That's what I affectionately call them. Uh, like, like, like we have a fucking auto shop at our high school. And then also we have paths for you. Like they are not like in the old world European class system, like, oh, you were born in this tax bracket so you're going to be a right. mechanic it's right. more like hey you can't stop making making horrible jokes to the teacher after class and you <laughs> don't also care about isosceles triangles you you but you are like like there are opportunities there are like yeah. there's like there's like these there's fingers everywhere for all of our kids that like like you could end up being a genius proving that you were a genius in something that wasn't necessarily testing well in this or that area that's what was happening when i was 15 um it, it going on all around me then the follow-up to that is really that they they started caving in on the other side right. the school papers started shutting down right the first time after I, I went to visit my uh school paper editor he's like nope no more school paper you were like one of the last ones we don't we don't we don't train kids to be creative anymore. We train them to pass English tests. Now, the obvious answer to all of this, and we've all watched the, everyone in my audience has probably seen these documentaries. Like it's it's because of these, there's the government agencies like who are who are like, I guess accountable to their voters. Then that say to the school districts like, oh, you've got a you have to make your kids smarter. Like they're, 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 they're terrible people now. They're rapists and murderers and carjackers, like make them smarter. And then the schools go, okay, we're going to, and, and, and then there's this weird thing happens where the tests become, everyone's just being trained to pass trained tests. Pass Otherwise test. the schools lose their funding and all this stuff. Then meanwhile, on the, on the 1% side, all of these campuses who used to be the places where, Fuck society. Fuck your parents even. Yeah, they paid for tuition, but they paid tuition because because you know what? This is a burgeoning industry, this idea of shaping your young adult mind. Yeah. Like like your parents are gonna pay fifty grand and they're gonna get a hippie spit out of this shoot and they're gonna be like, what the fuck did I pay for? And we're gonna be like a genius. And there was like there was like leeway there, but then from yeah. all sides, yeah. like you you've always you've been telling me about this. Like there was this yeah. there was a shift in the eighties, nineties, yeah. like where it was like like basically in general financial institutions started hanging out at the yeah. bars where city where government hung out at oh, yeah. and started going hey you want a pack of cigarettes follow <laughs> me to my van and then all government became slowly like the, it metastasized this entire thing the entire the separation of government and 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 business just disappeared, and now government is just taking it up the butt, not using that derogatorily. They're maybe they're in, because they're enjoying it, <laughs> and they have a right to to do it. Boy, but really, we need new colloquialisms. Right, it turns out <laughs> we need, yeah, it's we, fine. Need, we need new uh, we, we need new ways of stating yeah. like, <laughs> like we need a new word for pussy, and we need a new, this is like always like you that. can't we be need, David Mamet anymore. You can't just say you know what you're gonna swallow my cum, you <laughs> fucking faggot pussy. 
You uh, need all curse words. You might you yeah. might have a, an important point about yeah. about about dynamics, uh, but but yeah. So so I'm so obviously. I, I don't know if this was a nefarious plan, but it, it certainly evolved this way. And again, I think it's a lot because of unintended consequences, right? So uh, give me an example of like wh- why why are the, why at least from my perspective, a lot of these things changed. In the early 1980s, U.S. News and World Report came out with uh, ranking of colleges, and I would argue that that event actually accelerated all of these previous inclinations that the institutions had but never really acted upon because it was never really in their interest right all of a sudden they had their in their interest to do stupid things like restrict the number of students and come to the u- university because they wanted to have you know low acceptance rates and then have a lot of professors for uh, every student but you don't actually want the professor to teach the students you want them to be in the lab doing research and then you want to spend as much money as possible on that professor to do research so that you would go up in the in the rankings. And if you did that, guess what? You need a lot of rich kids to support this constricted number of seats. Right? It, and the so reverse would be a party school. You would show pictures correct. Of, of the football team. You'd show pictures of great fans and people spring breaking it up. And, and exactly. All of, and, yeah. and, all, and what both of those have in common and what all of that has in common with, meanwhile, in the inner cities, uh, kids being pushed through that can pass uh, tests, all of that yeah, goes back to the hydra of exactly. capitalism, so it, which it isn't a bad back. thing unless, but, but, well, maybe it is a bad thing. Well, it's, bad, we it's bad because what happens in the, in the outcome is that if, if the school, and this is kind of where it comes back to the banks and everybody else, those institutions want to hire ultimately and wind up hiring the sons and daughters of rich people. If you and trust the U.S. dollar to uh, measure everything, if you trust it to uh, uh, give equivalents, uh, everything is going to have a price. Human life is going to have a price. Like they, they, we, 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 we know this. It's right under our nose. We know that medicine doesn't work Privately, we know that education is not working privately. We know that, like, like well, but, it, we, but you know, but it, it can if 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 you had people think systemically, right? So if the government, rather than saying we're just going to subsidize universities and and to keep a blind eye, if in 1965 when federal financial aid got in, implemented, and all they said would be, any university is eligible for federal financial aid, if and only if the cost to attend that university rise at the rate of inflation or lower. Yes. If they just did that, you know how much every university would cost now? Like what we grand. cost, what we cost in tuition and fees. I wasn't <laughs> listening to that because I was thinking about because uh, I've, I've been trying to bring up our second guest because I want to plug this keymaster into this gatekeeper. Uh, I don't know if you guys are going to fight or 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 blow Uh-oh. up blow up New York, uh, <laughs> but uh, let's bring up our old friend Josh Andrasky. Looking fresh. Uh, hi, hello. So socialists no. are, are dressing differently now that, since the last time we talked. Yeah, <laughs> I figured I wouldn't wear a flannel, <laughs> uh, and I'm instead wearing a Shannon and the Clam shirt with two Barts kissing. That white jacket though is dope. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It's, it's luxury right. socialism. Have you it been is taking luxury. any of this stuff in, Josh? Yes. Um, I uh, so I'm a little I'm I'm conflicted personally with my ideology. Uh, I agree that um, I think schools should be public institutions. I think that as a society, we should value education and we should put people in our government that value education. And, uh, and again, the tendrils of capitalism have infected education, healthcare, blah, 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 all that shit. Uh, but I am also very intrigued at you destroying Harvard. Uh, because reforming, reforming. We want to reform. I, uh, I'm an accelerationist. Yeah. I think that Harvard is the ISIS of comedy, uh, and I oh. think that they deserve to go down. That uh, is hilarious. The ISIS best of comedy. Yes. Uh, I mean, just look at SNL. Um, but uh, the uh, truly for those who don't know, there's a huge rivalry in the comedy community between Harvard and uh, working guys. Guys yeah. who fucking. <laughs> Actually, tell jokes and love it. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> and but it, it, it's it's the exact thing where it's like it's you get into Harvard because you have the same last name as someone who got into Harvard, and then oh my God, look at you! You're writing on the show that used to be good and is now bad. Uh, it's so weird that there's more Harvard people. Uh, the best Harvard alum is the Unabomber. Anyway, uh, <laughs> as a word for the other, I don't know. As a as a showrunner who is therefore accidentally hired Ivy League guys. Uh, 
I like, you know, I I'm looking back now, actually, since the election is like as I, in, in the room, I used to like mock all my Ivy League guys because I have class issues because I'm like I, I and I'm like oh, they teach you that at Harvard they teach you that, yeah but like, <laughs> like the thing is they don't teach them anything there there so is some kind of co correlation it's probably not cause effect but there's a correlation yeah they keep the lights on uh, I mean you got to have people who actually show up to work well and that's I, the Harvard guys comedy <laughs> comedy comedy writing requires a support system yeah. and um, so if you're from the streets. Uh, and you want to be a comedy writer, uh, you're, 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 you're at this huge disadvantage, which is at, 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 at the same time means that, okay, so if you want the veal cutlets, like go with the people that had the support system, because if at 13, if you were Harvard bound and you decided you wanted to be a car Harvard writer there, you can, you can then split that assembly line into hacks and geniuses. And, and so there are still, there are people that come out of the Ivy league that, that knew talented. that they wanted to go in there Allegedly. knowing yes. I want to be a, a, a comedy writer. And I've, 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 I've worked with these guys and like yeah it's like it's whatever it, 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 it I, I didn't mean to piss on your fun parade and go like well not everybody's everything hashtag not all harvards <laughs> yeah. uh, and it is a fun it's a no, fun rivalry. Exactly right. it's not a real yeah. rivalry no, no. It, because if it was they would destroy us <laughs> <laughs> they're so rich <laughs> they could get a drone it'd be over um but uh yeah, shots so right now <laughs> but what, why isn't education? So what, what if we tomorrow, if we created a utopian base on the moon and we said, OK, I mean, we would not nobody up here would privatize any aspect of education, would we ever? What, well, what do you mean by privatize? Maybe, well, I mean, charge money for it. But I think I, know well, I would. Absolutely. I'll you would. Specialization. I'll tell you why. I mean, a nonprofit private universities are still private. Right. right. I mean, Berkeley is public. Harvard is private. Stanford is private. Uh, SUNY is public, right? Now, here's, I'm actually opposed to the idea of free college. And I'll tell you why. Uh -oh. Because uh, it's a regressive policy, right? Think about it. So, so, when, so if you think about college, like let's say, just say, not higher education, but just college, right? Like Louis like, Louis playing and people are chugging beers <laughs> college? Yes, yeah. that, that okay. college, right? Who, who goes to college? Black Rich people. people. R r so oh, rich people well, I was and, people, to cool. and people who are eventually going to be r relatively wealthy, right. right? Who is the tax base of this country? 100% of Americans. One way, shape, or form, you pay in taxes into this government. And so if you say, I'm going to take 100% of people's money and effectively give it to rich people who, can, who don't need it and people who will be rich... Maybe some of them will need, you know, do need a leg up, but eventually we'll be able to actually. I think you're distorting back. the numbers cr like crazy. Uh, like, there's way less rich people than poor people, or you know, there's fewer rich people than there are people that could use college for free. Oh yeah, free. for sure. But the problem so, is that rich people are overwhelmingly going to college, whereas poor people, in proportion, because they can't do not. afford it, and if they could, even, then they would overwhelmingly even, go to even college. Even if they can't afford it, the problem well, goes much earlier. Well, I think right. it's why, that, that's why I wanted to. Say, I simplified issue. it by saying if we were if if we were on the moon, if we if yeah. we if all we if had utopia, if yeah. all we had was some, uh, uh, well, it's a no, it's a disaster. All we have is a, a <laughs> oh, couple. That, that, all we have yeah. is a couple cans of uh, air and some <laughs> tents and some. You know, we got a hundred yeah. people, right. and uh, and and we're designing a society right. now. So we want to pick like which which. Parts of our society are uh, driven by the by the moon dollar. If 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 anything is going to be, um, if there is going to be a moon dollar, I should say, um, it, it, you know, it, that's what I meant. It was like mm -hmm. like if we're starting from scratch, because yeah. it sounds like more like you're being more pragmatic. I'm being more pragmatic. You're you're, yeah. you're you're saying like oh, if you change this light bulb and plug in this Christmas ornament, like right. it, it, I, the tree's I'm still going like, to burn. I think ideologically it's like why would education ever be purchasable sure why would it ever why would why would why would any child uh whether they're one years old 25 years old 48 years old why would any student um be if that, that wants to learn mm -hmm. anything uh why does it benefit your society if, moon, if the moon is going to go to war with mars and the moon has right. decided to charge money for education and mars hasn't mars i feel win. like mars, mars is going to win. win absolutely in the long run now yes. we have a different problem here because right. we could also say oh, legalize everything but if we legalize all drugs tomorrow here in our situation we're going to have blood on our hands yeah. mm -hmm. there's people Except what's illegal what drugs are illegal 
Well, I'm just saying that I'm just saying like it's there's a difference between having these conversations when there's an existing the existing you know, infrastructure. How, how, how do we, the, how do, how do we move? Have, there are no silver bullets. But yeah, there's right? in, within the existing infrastructure, I still think that um, you're 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 being a little tricky with numbers and and with statistics because you say that uh, poor people, regardless of how affordable college is. Uh, wouldn't go. Is no, no, that I'm, no, no. I'm all for the why the is it giving, regressive? Be, it's regressive because if you can afford seventy thousand dollars a year, right? And somebody says, "Let that person go for free on the taxpayer's dollar." That's insane. I'm totally that's not fine. insane. That's, I'm, yeah, I think that's I, insane. I'm fine insane. giving the like six rich people the money if the 94 out of the because, hundred. But it's not. We don't know what is. we don't know what social class is going to yield the doctor that produces the cure for cancer. But yep. they're going to college anyway. No, they don't not. need. They no. don't need like no, the, a not. bunch of they, them are going they to jail. Do need no the the the, the, the kid <laughs> the kids that are that can afford it. Mommy and daddy are writing that check. Right, but the kids well, who can't afford it might be the ones to cure the disease that we don't even know we're going to get yet. So we need to focus on them. But why would you not means test access to college? It doesn't make any sense. If oh, you have the means, means test, means test is interesting, but denying access will never yield the result. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying means the opposite is, is what got I'm, us into this well, problem in the first place. Where sweep, if you look throughout the history of America, sweeping programs. You know, for example. Uh, you look at like the golden age of comedy, right? The golden age of comedy, you had all these public works, theaters, and places where people could do music, and 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 all of these things were funded by a class trader in the yeah. White House, right? And so without that, these broke Jew immigrants that like I come from, you know, yeah. wouldn't be able to go learn to play the trombone and then become Sid Caesar, sure. you know? And so if it was means tested, it would be like, ah, if you make $14,999, you get to go to college. If you make Fifteen thousand one dollars. You don't get to go to college. Well, it's just a badly designed program, right? I mean, but it, I, I think it goes beyond that. Where, where the idea, and and for those that don't understand, uh, the the idea of means testing is to put a, a sort of line in the sand where you go, if you're more poor than this, you get this. If you're not, you you don't. And and certainly there will be absolutely uh, people that are rich or who don't need the program who will uh, benefit from it. But if you look, I mean, it, it, it realistically, at the numbers, there's far more people who deserve something that will be getting it. That's why I believe that healthcare should be, you know, uh, totally free and public and public universities. And I actually do think that there is a place for private universities, for-profit private universities within Certainly. the system, optionally. Because I don't believe in like a like with Stalin th thing. To, to me, educational, I guess, privatiz privatization would be analogous with uh, elective surgery. Like, I want to look like Mel Brooks. Uh, but then don't you uh, think you're getting then, the advantage? Okay, then you have to pay for that. Wait, the but, government but, doesn't but, pay for but that. But that's not good. That's what? not good because then all of the rich people, this is what you have today. You have the poor people going to the poor university and you have the rich people going to the rich university. Where is Goldman Sachs going to go higher? I mean, hopefully nowhere near my friends. <laughs> okay, well, but, but the point is, is when that... it comes to sciences, though, it doesn't matter which university you go to. It's the results that you yield. It's the skills that you learn. You, correct, right? So, but then again, you have to resource those universities to provide those results. Right but, right, but that's what happens. Rich companies come in and they buy half of University of Wisconsin to develop something for their company. But when you limit access, you guarantee that you are not going to get the best Oh, product. no, exactly. So you, you what so you have to do is you have to change. So again, this is a good way. So here, I'll give you a, a solution that I would implement if I was sure. like mad, magic wand, right? So my magic wand would be um, the government makes a declaration, which is if you want to be a nonprofit, if you want to have any federal dollars, any, any kind, you know, access to Apollo grants, not pay taxes and all the rest, very simply, your student body needs to roughly align to the socioeconomic spectrum in the United States. Right, do it by deciles, right? You get 10% of your students from the top 10%, 10% of the bottom 10%, and throughout. If you do not do that, all of your federal funding, gone. Deal. Right? At that point, you have solved the access problem overnight. Deal. Yeah, deal. Right? I mean, or but you, you don't have to do anything for free, right? You just have to actually get those units. So Harvard won't be 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. It would be 10% and 90 from the bottom. They would take no chances, right? I, so this is this to me is something that, that you I could feel do. like that system sounds better for Congress. If yeah. like Congress had to have like a, a representative like spectrum of wealth as like America, but for like 
you know, if, if we talk about how you need a college education for a job, if we talk about, you know, how, like, for me personally and for a lot of people, I think education is a human right, yep. then uh, anything that you do to get rid of access, uh, to, to limit access to all people is, is bad. And, and, yeah. and that's not to say that, like, you know, if you go to the poor school or whatever, you know, it, it would be in a situation where, because of the taxes, because of the money coming in, there would be all this new money coming into public universities. So those schools would become better, right? If there's more people, if there's more perspectives, if there's more money coming in, then people who go to those schools who luck out and become, you know, people who can hire people, they'll go, I'm not going to hire from Harvard. You know, like this hypothetical Correct. is just as realistic as Correct. your hypothetical. Correct. If you, if you actually create a much, much more well-resourced, fo education-focused public university that actually teaches people how to think, right. and you have the privacy keeping doing whatever they're doing, then you're definitely right, right? Yeah, the, yeah then I think... The, I, the, 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 shift, the, the tide will shift. I think with my right? drunken brain, I think I'm just dumb enough to perceive that two smart people are agreeing, but that you guys are uh, different distances from the problem. Yeah. The, the, the not distances from the problem being... Different a, approaches. A, a, like, like, you're... you're you were you were born from it and like have a fucking like you're you you want to like dig in and like plug this wire into that wire and like hot wire this car and Josh is going like why fucking cars man <laughs> like like, like and, 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 and and I think both of you are, are are agreeing but or I'm dumb and drunk no, I, I and that's at least half true I think absolutely that your system has a place within the system that I'm imagining you know I I think that. Um, that they're they're absolutely it's 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 absurd that you know the Ivies run the way they do with legacy bullshit and right. and all of that and that absolutely needs to be reformed right. and that there absolutely is a place in the world for those who choose electively to uh, join up for profit specialized you know private right. institution like Devry uh, <laughs> or ITT. Yeah. Or I'm, several places you could go to. We will we'll leave links. Um, yeah, if you use the <laughs> promo code whoops, you can join <laughs> University of Phoenix right now. Well, if I don't yeah, if I if if I don't play the bad guy and cut people off, we'll we'll we we then then no one is. That that's that's that's, that's my role cuz cuz as you know, if you're new to this podcast, it's time to play Balderdash. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, so Spencer, are we? Are you prepared to uh, to 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 not? You're not. You're not DMing Balderdash because the I might. part of the game is that we're going to rotate through <laughs> dealers. I think. Yeah, I think um, that's part of the game. The game of Balderdash is simple. Have you no, guys played Balderdash? No. The, each participant will uh, make up an answer. Uh, to the question, right? Well, you yeah. explain it. You're better. I'm bad at explaining games. Well, let me. Why don't I dash for the first round? All right. And then, and then I think that I think it'll. I think by playing around, it'll it'll become learn by doing. Yeah, it's pretty simple. It's basically like I'm gonna give you guys a piece of paper. I'm gonna give you. A, I'm gonna give you a, uh, a box. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to give you a box. <laughs> I'm going to give you, e I'm gonna, depending on the category, I'm going to give you an acronym, a movie synopsis, or a movie title, uh, 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 a human name, something right. like that. That 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 thing has a sort of explanation. If it's a movie, the movie has a synopsis. If it's a, if it's a if it's an acronym, then the letters I'm going to give you stand for something in real life somewhere. I'm going to know the answer to that. You guys are going to take two minutes. I've got a special surprise for you during what? that two minutes uh, uh, to write a an attempt at a convincing answer to what that thing is. <laughs> and then I'm going to read them all aloud, including the real answer. And... Uh, uh, Cards? Yes. And then here's your answer card. I'll explain more in a second. Spencer, you're going to do one too, right? Yeah. Okay. So players, so these are for far away. So he's going to read the name, and then we're going to invent yeah. fake answers. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to start with a really simple example because I think, I, think, I, think, I think one of my least favorite categories will actually make the best practice round. It's called laughable laws. <laughs> okay. Laughable laws. All right. So if I say I say to you guys, in Garfield County, Montana, 
it is illegal to draw dot 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 and then you just you just have two minutes to write an answer to that please remember to write your uh, your name down in the lower right and your uh yeah and just write your answer in the other spot and then for this two minutes uh, andy dick is just gonna over there we're gonna have two minutes of andy dick while you take we have uh, a microphone for you if you need yes it's over there sorry Okay, is anyone Can keeping get, time, though? I forgot that hello? part. Do it's on, but talk into it to you get can't, it. You can't. Sound hello? Test it. Oh, yeah. You, okay. okay. Can I get my get new intern done. up to hold this? They don't have a um, stand. Do, do you need uh, we, a we must be 35 stand? seconds into it. By well, now. that's okay. They're already though. writing. If, the if they have longer, it's just... Can you come... Oh. Do my thing. Well, no, you, well, you keep okay, going. I'll you keep it. going. I'll do it on the next one. We got two whole minutes. I just well, what, what minute are we on? That's we're on like minutes. we're thirty minutes, thirty seconds. Are in. you doing whippets? No. Oh. I wish. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Maybe if you blow in this. And Can we I have some Andy it? Dick music? Just is that or do the D and D music? Just well, why don't you hold on to him and uh, oh, no no I'm sorry I'm not talking to you Andy sorry we're I thought we're you were saying hold story. on to him just meaning hold on me. to you because I gotta write the you you keep going ow God damn you thank you Zach oh for the podcast Andy's blowing up a glove I couldn't find the oh Michael that's right balloons. okay Andy's blowing up a glove yeah thank you Spencer no Good I job. mean that about covers it you guys done. No, keep it. Keep going. We got about a minute. Okay, you can hand me your cards. I'm getting my headed. I haven't made this work yet. You didn't put your name. You gotta put your name. Oh, okay. Sorry. Somebody else is making that. We have a live ADR team here that is amazing. Yours, so do we could do, do it, it after, no. right? Well, no, I, one no, because I don't. Okay. Oh, I got, I got. Yeah, you. Uh, uh, okay, I know which one is yours because it's the one without the name on it. Okay. okay. It was me doing it, wasn't it? Brandon. I don't think I don't. Did it sounded like it was one? coming from over there, didn't it? Didn't it? Dude, I d- let me look at your answer. <laughs> okay. All right. This is going. This is going pretty good, I think. All right. No, it's me. <laughs> Okay, that's the two we minute. It, All right, thank you, Andy okay. Dick. He'll be back in a moment. All right, it'll be good. All right, thank We're you. all learning. That's that's. that's thank that's, you, thank you. <laughs> okay, I get it. I'm, I'm okay. Okay. Those nitrile Let's gloves. Let's strike that. Are Can we strike that? Let's strike that. Can we strike that? All right. Let's good. strike that. Can you striking. point it right into the Still monitor? Striking. That's Longest strike ever. That was Still human, on human, camera. T- human timer, Andy you. Dick. Stricken. As we got, yeah, okay. This I'm, is a growth opportunity. Yeah, I'm, well, I, I'm worried about. I had a lot. I had so much trouble with that, and I'm like the balderdash expert. I'm yeah. worried about sicking that on other people. Like I'm right. I think maybe I should just be the permanent balderdash. Yeah, I was kind of thinking about just having one dealer when we were. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty we sure we all learned that tonight. No one can get an F. <laughs> right. All right. So now you at home and you guys, it's your your job to try to guess which one is the uh, real one. And then uh, each person that guesses the real one, if any, those people get a certain number of points. It's either one or two. I think it's one. Right. Uh, anybody whose who's, uh, answer accrues guesses, I think that guy gets two points. See, this is means testing in action. <laughs> uh I got the points here. We is, it, is it one? You get if one, you get a vote. If you get your answer voted for, you get a point. Okay. If you get the right, if you guess the right answer, you okay, get two you points. get two points. And if I, I get three points if none of you guess the real one. Okay. Just as a right. And if someone accidentally it keeps me gets honest. it right, okay, you also get three points. All right. So, in Garfield County, Montana, it is illegal to draw. Shuffling these up. I wrote the real answer on one of these pieces of paper, so you're not getting any clues. Are we allowed to use Google? No. Okay. <laughs> it's not called uh, bald or cheat. <laughs> well, called. it wouldn't be cheating if you were allowed to use it. In Garfield County, Montana, it is illegal it to draw testing. funny faces on the outside of your window shades. Interesting. 
<clears throat> is this is in Montana? Yep. Okay. <laughs> a male phallus on an overpass. Also interesting. A man enjoying himself to the Isley Brothers live album moments after his divorce. <laughs> Sharon. Is final Sharon? <laughs> You're not supposed to tip your hat if you didn't answer. <laughs> to those listening. I mean, Brandon you can. Is, it's fun. He is nodding. <laughs> yeah, that didn't, uh, didn't work I well. wasn't going to I didn't know how this one. was going right. to pay off. Well, <laughs> no, it's cool. This, th- you, you made the right choice. <laughs> a commissioned mural. On a Monday, bitch. Okay, so those those answers again. In Garfield County, Montana, it is illegal to draw funny faces on the outside of your window shades, uh, a male phallus on an overpass, a man enjoying himself to the Isley Brothers live album moments after his divorce is final, Sharon. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So that's a crime in a lot of states, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> a commissioned mural. On a Monday, bitch. <laughs> All right. Whose guesses are whom's? Wait, aren't we supposed to guess? Yes. That's uh, why oh. I said whose guesses the are The funny whom's. faces is my guess. Funny faces is your guess. So let's see. I'll put a little S there. And then, uh, Ben, what's your guess? Uh, I'm going to go with the overpass. Overpass. Phallus. So I put a, I'll put a B in there. And then, uh, Josh? I'm going to go funny faces. It's Montana. It's weird. Funny faces. Okay, so in the game of Balderdash, what would happen here? Wait. Oh, wait. Sorry, Brandon, wait. You didn't have to ask me. Well, yeah, I mean. No. No, what's your guess? Josh, Josh, you're picking picking funny faces, right, Josh? Yes. Okay. (laughs) What do you think the real answer is? Well, well, Brandon, what do you think is the real one? I was going to say penises. Uh, On the overpass. Typical. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> so that's okay. So I don't get any points because some of you guessed the real one. The real one is funny faces on the outside what? of the yeah. window shades. Uh, Spencer, therefore, gets a point. Is I that get correct? two points for getting the right answer, and I get two points because two people voted for my answer. Wait. Oh, you get no, you get one point for guessing the right answer. No, I get two points who guessed the real answer. Two points to players who guessed the real answer. I'm reading it right off the thing. Two oh, points. So to you only get you get a point right for everyone answer. who guesses yours. So yeah. two people guessed yours. Right. So you're getting a total of three points. Because I did the phalluses on the overpass. Oh, oh. <laughs> Spencer just left. It's it. Ran off stage. He's lost his mind. He's back on stage. Rolled on stage. Fire rolled on stage, and he's back to the chair. Which. Prints. Did not roll away. He stuck the landing. I hope I win now. <laughs> so that's that's a that's a total of yeah. I can't remember. Y- Four y- points. Okay. Did so anyone else win points? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, some other people won some points <laughs> because. Uh, yeah, you got two points for getting the right answer. Right. God damn it. It's too <laughs> points hard. Points are fun. I mean, we could just do the rounds without keeping score. Well, yeah, but what's yeah? It's not fun, right? Yeah. I mean, is it? <laughs> it's well, it's funner relative. than this. <laughs> 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 it's, hey, we, we could eat bowls of shit and be fine. Wait a minute. And that's not. Wait a minute. Huh? I'm, a f- I'm a fun stickler. <laughs> Where did, boy, wake up, Harmon. Yeah. I don't know how Doug Benson does it on his show. I did, yeah, I guess I was just thinking, like, if we did, like, if we did enough rounds. But then I was, uh, but it's just like, I wouldn't wish this job on anyone. Uh, uh, like, like, this is awful. It's, it's really hard to do. Yeah, this job is balderdash. <sighs> oh, that's why it's the My dasher. Yeah, See, I just got Thank that. You. All right, so someone Spencer won, and somebody else got points. So the I should have <laughs> ran around in a circle. <laughs> we could do another round. Oh, well, <laughs> I mean, you don't seem to want to, no, so that's I'm just, fine. I'm just worried about. I, I have to, I have two hats on. Do you want one yeah. is a terrible balderdash dealer, and then the <laughs> other is a terrible podcast host? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we got you, I though. feel like I'm making my I'm, <laughs> the, the two of them are are losing uh, to to each other and uh, uh, yeah and, and we're all losing to Doug Benson. It feels like choosing a holiday game that ends in arguments might not have been <laughs> the best. <laughs> but talking about politics was going so well. <laughs> worse. You oh, you could worse. <laughs> can we can we give you what we stall just a little bit and maybe ask Ben where we're going in terms of education. 
You mean while Andy Dick does two minutes, or <laughs> <laughs> or do you mean <laughs> while you while you get your cards together? Because we we don't know what the what's the uptick on the the way of getting out of this conversation that we had with you earlier. That's sort of like, uh. what should we expect? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that ain't that ain't nearly as good, Andy Dick. <laughs> Is there a camera? I thought that? I heard my name. <laughs> no, you did. Uh, I'm, late. I'm late. I mean, early. Am I early or late? You're just a little early. You just a oh, little. Yeah. Early. Oh, but you had it's all the cool. instruments. You did have the right instruments. <laughs> <laughs> I could have sworn we said two hangers, Andy Dick. One hanger, Andy Dick, is who we're working with right now. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Tell tell us tell us tell us give tell us a little us. future. Well, so, uh, so uh, you know, so will give you an example. So Minerva is now on our third class of undergrads. Kay. So started this past September. And where, where um, are the first one and two classes? They're, this semester they're in Seoul. Next okay. semester they're going to Hyderabad. Awesome. Um, and uh, for this third class, we received more applications, third class ever, than Dartmouth or MIT did. So give me, what's the ballpark 20, on that? 20,400 applications Good. from 179 countries. And how many people are you going to take? Uh, we took last year just under 2%, which wow. actually shows that you can be the most selective university in the country and the most socioeconomically diverse without trying. It's not, that wasn't the goal. It was just we stopped discriminating. Do you have scholarships? Uh, yeah. 80% of our students are in some form of financial aid. That's pretty amazing. It's yeah. pretty yeah. amazing. So what do you hope? What is your biggest dream with all of this? Would you, would you want a brick and mortar one day? No, no. My, my, my biggest dream is that other universities uh, are forced to follow. Uh, because what we've, we've shown, third party assessed our students and showed that what our students have been able to accomplish in eight months, no university has been able to demonstrate that they can get their students to accomplish in four years. And that's on critical thinking, problem solving, reasoning, and communication skills. Do you have any sort of endowment program? Uh, we uh, we have an endowment, but okay. it uh, uh, it will take a long time to realize. So right now we're doing a lot of fundraising to enable all those scholarships, mm -hmm. uh, and it's um, it's hard work. Yeah, thanks for doing that hard well, work. Well, uh, that sounds like uh, Andy Dick. Where are you? <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, Wait hold, hold on, on the Andy Dick. Up. Hold on, Andy. Hold your Andy Dick. Hold your Andy Dick. Stroke <laughs> it, but hold it. Love it. It's, it's, it's our fault. It. it sounds a lot to me like the narrative is subjective, as it is in the category of <laughs> what a transition. Of, what a transition. of uh, marvelous movies in Balderdash. So Segway I'd like you masters. to each take take one of these empty Balderdash cards, and uh, I'd like you to try to convince each other uh, what the plot synopsis would be for a marvelous movie entitled. <clears throat> San Diego, I love you. Uh, two minutes of Andy Dick will happen during your writing. Yeah. Yeah, I saw this in Germany once. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't hurt yourself. Well, we'll get we'll get we'll get somebody to help you next time. Sorry. When does the time start? You, it starts now. It started, yeah. Tell me when we're at thirty. You got it. Ramp it up, and then tell me when we're at you know one thirty. I got it. Well, okay. We're at thirty. No, I I'll do that. He oh. needs to write an answer. Okay. We're at th we're at thirty. No, no, no. Um, Two hanger, two hanger, two hanger, Andy Dick in the house. Two hanger, two hanger, two hanger, Andy Dick in the house. Brandon, write your answer. Are we at one? I'm hitting. This should, this should be about the bridge, like the midpoint. Oh. Yeah. Well, I don't. At least look up. Well, don't. He's writing. Don't get. He's he's in the competition, and you're looking at him and banging a thing. Look at. I'll. I can talk to you about this. So you, you had to, you had these guys. Uh, they're they're all writing. Yeah. 
I'll, here, I'll ask you. I'll interview you. Now, Andy, I don't want to get you in legal trouble, but this is stomp-based, maybe? Is this stomp-based? You know, stomp is sponsored by Excedrin. <laughs> is that a setup? Am I supposed to... Uh, how, how, well, how did they... <laughs> how did they know? <laughs> oh, it's sponsored by Excedrin. Okay, all right. That was my timer. That's been two minutes? Yeah. Did ladies and gentlemen, Andy Dick, Andy thank Dick, you so everybody. much. Andy, Andy, Andy Dick, Dick goes two gentlemen. minutes of Andy Dick. Andy Dick. Andy Dick. This is we not his first time. Don't. Andy Dick. Don't take those. We could we could do that. Do you got your do I have everybody's uh, card over here? I got I got people forgetting to write their names. That's a normal balderdash thing. Um got uh, okay. I got I think if I can And that's okay, and so I know the person that didn't write their name then. Okay. I wrote my name. Why, why are you so mean to me? I don't think you wrote your I, name. I wrote oh, you did. Bottom, <laughs> bottom right. Bottom right. Yeah, wait. Who didn't? <laughs> no, thank you, though. God bless. All right, that's okay. Oh, boy. Fuck, I'm sorry. Like, no, no, I didn't. That wasn't it. Oh, oh, <laughs> I okay. know how that sounded <laughs> hearing it, but it was just like, yeah, this is... Yeah, I mean we it's, can't it's afford the, that. It, look, you, you uh, it's obviously it's not gonna it's not gonna take out D and D. So again, you're safe. No, <laughs> this isn't what I'm saying. This is what, uh, it's just like I this has been a I mean gauntlet is negative, but <laughs> smorgasbord to be sure. <laughs> just keep on your toes, you know, if D and D ever no, I, ever I, falls below this level of I'm entertainment. I'm just saying <laughs> I'm not complaining. I like this. Okay. I like bad podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, I really do. I think this is a lot of fun. Right, I, I feel like this out. It's is the Brandon didn't write his name. It's very unique. I feel like the listeners should be doing what they do right now. Okay. You know, they should be entertaining themselves for a second. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, listeners. If you're, if you're bored you're right now, it's because you as a listener have not. <laughs> you didn't get up to make a cheese sandwich? <laughs> personal responsibility. You've been sitting here for personal an hour and 46 the minutes. You didn't days, get up to get popcorn. Commercials. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Are you back from the bathroom? Good, because we're ready for you now, yeah. listener. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for doing your part. Oh. Uh, all right, San Diego, I love you, <clears throat> is a movie, and the following uh, possible synopses uh, include the real one, and your job is to guess. Okay. Ooh, got a little shit face. No, that was exactly <laughs> the explanation of the game. San Diego, I love you. A daughter tries to keep her family together. With while promoting her father's inventions, I mean that. I'm trying not to laugh. <laughs> San Diego, I love you. San Diego is taken over by Oceanside Gamers. San Diego, could happen. I love you. It's just the Godfather, but everyone's name is Skyler. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's name is what? Skype? Skyler. Skyler. <laughs> Skyler. San Diego, I love you. Two paths collide in this 1980s culture crash between a hip comic book artist and a fastidious marine drill sergeant. Interesting. A romantic comedy musical about former high school sweethearts who fall in love with each other and their hometown. So, those synopses again. Are their names <laughs> wow. San and Diego in that man. last one? It could be any of those. Oh, man. San Diego, I love you. A daughter tries to keep her family together while promoting her father's inventions. San Diego, I love you. San Diego is taken over by Oceanside Gamers. San Diego, I love you. <laughs> it's just the godfather, but everyone's name is Skyler. San Diego, I love you. Two paths collide in, the 1980s, in this 1980s culture crash between a hip comic book artist and a fastidious marine drill sergeant. San Diego, I Love You, a romantic comedy musical about former high school sweethearts who fall in love with each other and their hometown. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, we'll start the guessing with Ben Nelson, noted educational mm. activist, <laughs> <laughs> turned balderdash, turned balderdash uh, midler. Uh, very, very bad uh, player. Um, I'll go with... Uh, the culture crash, the 1980s. Culture, culture crash. Culture, culture clash. 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 Yeah. Clash. Yeah. Clash. 
All right, we got a we got a BN on that one. Shout out to Culture Clash. <laughs> All right, <laughs> wonderful comedy show. And uh, Josh Andrasky. Uh, 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 I'm a guy. Uh, 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 <laughs> social activist <laughs> in uh, uh, self-imposed exile. Sure. Uh, I uh, I'm gonna go with the Culture Clash one because it sounds like something you'd read on the back of a VHS, and uh, <laughs> it reminds me of like you know. Lily Tomlin and Mel Brooks are the couple of the 90s in this <laughs> wacky... Th- yeah, it's right. that one. We got, we got that. Uh, Brandon? I'm going to go with uh, the daughter trying to, daughter. to hustle her dad's old products. All right. Well, Brandon has I made... I got to go. Oh, you got to go. Well, it sounds like you said he had the right answer, but I was going to guess the last answer, the, the fifth one, whatever the... What was... The uh, it was the, the, the musical. Are you just, you're not trying to hmm? just give it to me, are you? Just get the no, points. it sounded like he was about to say that <laughs> yeah. you had the right answer, just and I didn't want to then use that knowledge to cheat. <laughs> yeah, all right. So Spencer guessed Ben's. Damn it. Which means Ben gets a point? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Brandon guessed the right one, which means Brandon gets two points. Right. Nice. Uh, San Diego, I love you, wow. was, in Real fact, nice. a daughter tries to keep her family together with prom- while promoting wow. her father's inventions, yeah. what was his? What were his inventions? Uh, drones. <laughs> drones. Great. Uh, then it sounded like Jurassic. Weaponized. Park. Weaponized drones. Yeah. <laughs> Josh and Ben both <laughs> once again drawn in by Spencer's <laughs> uh, perverse ability to emulate a board game. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that really does when you when you look at it, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> He's like a balderdash ringer. Part person, part dash. Yeah. All right. Are you still keeping score? Do we, do we play I think a third I'm round? at six. I think I'm at six to maybe someone has two. I think I you have two. two. I got two from the first I round. Yeah. One. yeah, you got one this round. This round. Yeah. So we make this last one for a thousand points. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Sounds great. <laughs> All right. Now, Andy, I want you on deck, but okay. you're not going yet. I'm on deck. We're going to get better at this. For the, this third round, we're going to show you how this fucking, this is going to go good. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's been going good. <laughs> yeah, we are. They're bringing CISO back just for this. Oh, great. Oh, Brought boy. to you by Balderdash and CISO. <laughs> CISO, we spent too much money on you guys. <laughs> CISO, you saw it coming. <laughs> CISO, nothing left to see, so <laughs> check out Hulu. Um, I guess I'll do... A category of uh, peculiar people. So this is just a name. Here, pass these blank ones so down. So it's like a historical figure? Benito well, Mussolini. It's, it's not necessarily true. It's just a name. That's a, you, so you just have to. Here, I'll pick an example one uh, so that we can get the tone. Like peculiar people uh, example would be O'Shea Jackson. And then the answer is the real name of Raptor actor Ice Cube. Well, geez, well, that was a bad thing for them to include. <laughs> what happens when somebody if writes you, the real answer? If you get the, if you know the real one, you get some points. You, you might get, get like, three points. Yeah, but everybody gets a thousand, so you would get. Well, we're not. Well, I, I was kidding. I, oh, I don't want to. Oh, I, I don't wow. want to fuck okay. that up. So Christmas is ruined. Excellent. Oh right, that means I'm almost certainly going to win. <laughs> yeah, I need those points to feed my family, Dan. Yeah, we could do double this. points maybe, I mean, or we could say we? you have to win by ten. And just keep playing until... <laughs> wow. <laughs> that we could do. All right. This is a name. The name is Jeremy Bentham. B-E-N-T-H-A-M. And what are we supposed to do? You're supposed to just say who we that person do. is. Okay. Like why they're notable. Yes. What their deal is. Okay. They might I be the inventor of peanut butter. They're right. And I give you two minutes of Andy Dick. If you love Christmas Nativity at the Crystal Cathedral, you'll love this next act, Andy Dick at Harmontown. Okay, two hangers, a mallet. Uh, Looks like a one by six. We're at, we're at, now we're at about 20 seconds in. Yeah. Andy Andy has a uh, one by... 
four. I don't know. It's a, yeah, it's it looks a like long, a one by thin piece of four, lumber. One by six. I'm just saying, it's better if I'm on deck like a little earlier. Yeah, right. Was, yeah. We're at uh, 35. Whoa. This isn't just stump. Knock. It's Andy's off-Broadway show called Knock. I forgot to write my name again. Put it on Broadway if you're doing it. Oh, goodness. Please, ah. please don't. <laughs> For everybody listening with headphones, God bless you. 14 <laughs> people just died in car yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're at one minute and uh, 30 seconds. So we have 30 more seconds. Right. Yeah, half an hour. 30 more seconds. 30 more, 30 seconds. more seconds. So if you could just do the two verses, first two verses. <laughs> oh, a remix. Hey. Excellent. <laughs> oh. Okay, it's Ben. Did, ben didn't put his name. Okay. I, got did, it. I did. I oh, you name. did. Wait. Yeah. I didn't. Oh, Josh I, didn't? No, I didn't. No. Brandon. I didn't. Brandon. 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 I keep forgetting. Okay. I'm watching, you know, I'm watching Lion King yeah, right yeah. now. No, you're, you're, you're wearing a lot of hats. Okay, thank you. That was two minutes of Andy Dick. Two minutes of Andy Dick. The show. Intern. Yeah, we could get that. Huh? Uh, Did you want to do something on the back I don't of the know. album? Well, I kind of want to. Well, I, 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 I I don't. I don't think there will be because, but like, 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 yeah. Just for the people that l are listening, like, why don't you just tell them something Andy Dickish? You know, like, you know, because any anyone can bang on a board. Like, tell, 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 tell everybody about 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 uh, being unexpectedly uh, uh, bisexual in some like uh, point in your life or. So, well, why don't you could just tell us how you're doing? How are you? Well, that was certainly an action. So, he's angry. He's angry at me. I'm there's nothing better than a scruffy figure tossed a traffic uh, cone onto the stage. Hey. <laughs> Did how, you, how, 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 don't. how are you? Like, like to let people know how you are. Some here. People, listeners of my podcast have been... Right. Um, he, you wanted me to stay on for the blind listeners? What are you doing for the holiday season, Andy Dick? Hanging Anything? out with my kids. They're all here right now. Because you just did, you told a great drunk tale about the Christmas... Uh, that one that on Vice. Yes. So this year, you've got to have something different planned. Oh, yes. Or are you going to revisit that shit? No, 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 no. <laughs> something Hell else? No. Well, it's probably going to be, you know, the Yule Tide log. Something low key. Yeah, very low key. Yeah. You're invited. The trickster Thank God? Thank you so much. I'm always invited to your stuff, and it's like I come 50 50, right? Do you do Dino's Christmas? Uh, it's 50 50. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. I, right. usually, I usually go out of town, but I'm, I'm, I'm staying but in town. And he's always went. invited. Uh, he's had a standing invite. D he just doesn't him. know where you're you going. You heard him. You heard him. <laughs> You went to Santa Barbara last week, and w you were caught in the fires. Yeah. So have you no, talked about that? No, I, d I didn't. He think was caught. I'm going to talk about it. He was caught in the fires, <laughs> like trapped. <laughs> tell him. <laughs> and don't forget, uh, Dan, tell us about the Paul McCartney song when you get a chance. I had, the, oh, I had like the... No, nah, we'll talk about that next week. Okay. Uh, like, like, uh, next week will be our Christmas episode, and we'll talk about the Paul McCartney Christmas song. Excellent. Which um, one? Which is a very Simply polarizing song. Oh. Christmas time. It, that that piece of shit, horrible. You don't like Thank Paul McCartney? You. It's the worst Why? fucking Christmas. Why have you met song. him? <laughs> no, I haven't. Met, I, I don't hate Paul McCartney. I hate his Christmas song. Okay, that's probably it's probably shitty. And he hates a, a, a correct, a generous <laughs> word because it doesn't. De that, that song doesn't deserve my activation. It's. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, no. now but but he I did so many. Okay, yeah. Anybody, a, anybody who starts a sentence with the word "simply" can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do they know it's Christmas after all? Is kind of the shittiest oh, one he for wrote me. That one is that the one? Yeah. Do they yeah. Know? The snow is white. Inserted in the here. The lights are on. <laughs> the gifts are out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's enough. <laughs> fuck yeah. it. Simply have. It's like uh, the no, laziest yeah. fucking Christmas song. Uh, the Santa's here. The the deer can fly. 
The fucking snow is falling. What I'm else do you want? I'm a beetle. <laughs> da, da, da. Like you can feel his fucking oh. muscles atrophying. Hilarious. And then for it to be in every jukebox and for everyone to fall for that, it's, it's like we, we need better education, better critical thinking skills. We need kids to be out there going, I'm not going to play this on the jukebox. This is ridiculous. It has four notes. <laughs> so like, like you, you, uh, nah, 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 Darlene nah. Love. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> let's right. uh, let's wrap this up with the uh, results of this last yes, round of Balderdash. All right, well, thank can, you, can thank I you leave? to Andy yeah. Dick. Yes, <laughs> go to Andy's Periscope if you want to uh, give me money. Him. Periscope has changed. I'm gray listed. Did we get into that? Where do I put this microphone? Yeah. Just put I'll it take in. it. Uh, yeah, or you can. I can't work again <laughs> for three months. That's what gray listed wow. means. Yeah, and uh, for three months. No, that's his estimate. Andy's Andy's using the phrase gray listed to refer to him. I would using an algorithm that I came up with in my face. <laughs> that's like he has a base. <laughs> I need a base. I think there's a lot of people that are rooting for Andy. Andy's yeah. It's a, and when Andy says gray listed, I think what he means not to put words in his mouth, but I am. Everybody loves Andy, but yeah, he he can't get work because it's like like and so he's not blacklisted because it's not like oh you're there's some reason that you're. Your your band. It's like it's oh, nice period. <laughs> there's no there's no denial of it or whatever. It's like a, we'll, we'll keep track of Andy and his and his travails. He's a, he was he was he was uh, he was uh, periscoping from here, and now Periscope has some tip feature. I believe Andy is 100 percent subsisting on Periscope right now. Wow! Please give. It's an it's a new business model. You don't have to wait for Periscope. You can you can give anyway. Um, We're going to be doing an Andy Dick telethon later on. All right, operators are standing by. Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. that. I do like that. Like, like what, what with the post Weinstein, like the sex scandal, all this stuff. And I was like, no, Andy's going to survive this fine because he's a human hurricane. Because, like, the one headline about Andy Dick that, that, that came out during that whole uh, purge was like the headline was so complicated it tripped over itself. It was like, Andy Dick. Uh, confesses to sexual assault, asks the cameraman if he's married, falls down, eats a trash bag, and uh, like like ends up marrying somebody. Like it was like, it was like the headline is like like leave this guy alone. Yeah. Like yeah. he's not he's, you're you're not knocking anyone down a peg if you're if you're if you're going for Andy Dick. Uh, sure. like he's 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 on his own journey. Very honest, very open. Always. He may, he may be the one he he may be the last man standing. Uh all right. I hope he didn't mind me speaking about him like that while he's standing off stage. Yeah, that's nice. Of no, him to... he's uh, he's in, he's in the back. <clears throat> All right. Uh, on top of someone. <laughs> so, your 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 question was, who is this? Wait, the name like was. I'm not gonna. Fuck <laughs> it. I didn't I write it down. Out of comedy heaven. The when name is Jeremy Bentham. Yes. Nobody. Jeremy else. Bentham. <laughs> the possibilities of Jeremy Bentham are he is, assuming he. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> he is one of seven genders or two sexes. All right. He is musician Adam Ant, a noted moral philosopher. His preserved body is on display at a London university. <laughs> the boy who ate the most spaghetti. Damn it. <laughs> Hilarious. I think that's a good answer. That's a good answer. <laughs> I've been getting stoned on stage. I think that's a yeah. good answer. Yeah, fuck that dude. <laughs> the first, I'm sorry, I'm drunk. The first Puerto Rican shortstop for the Padres. Oh, los lleva me, Ben found. Yeah. <laughs> Those answers again. <laughs> Jeremy Bentham is yeah, either me, musician Adam Ant, si. a noted moral philosopher. Uh, his preserved body is on display at a London university. The boy who ate the most spaghetti or the first Puerto Rican shortstop for the Padres? Puerto Rican. <laughs> Puerto. Puerto Rican? <laughs> Who should uh, go first? Uh, Spencer, you guess first. Sorry, I uh, skipped you last time. It's okay. Um, the first answer. The What was it? Adam Ant? Adam Ant, yeah, sure. That's a Spencer guess for Adam Ant. All right. Ben Nelson. Uh, I'm going to go with the body in the university. <laughs> All right. Josh. Although I want to say the boy who ate the most spaghetti because <laughs> it's a great answer. I'm going to have to go with Adam Ant because I'm just going to follow whatever Spencer does in a board game. All right. I'm going to go with philosopher. 
All right. Well, this is a complicated round, most notably because Josh Andrasky high fived his own answer. Does that <laughs> someone was going to take it? <laughs> like someone was going to guess yeah, it? He's just trying. He just thought maybe he could psych Brandon out. He's like, well, I'd love to say the boy has spaghetti. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, I'm on my last limb here, man. I didn't come here to make podcast it's, friends. By the it's, way, it's kind it's of. It's also complicated because there are two right answers. It's a. Oh, <laughs> look at the drama. <laughs> Wait, there were, oh, 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 <laughs> oh, because you knew. Uh, oh, of course. Well, the co- it's a, it's a, like college college master knows <laughs> knows everything uh, that goes on at a college, including if a body is preserved in the, at, a, at, a, at a university yeah, in London. Yeah, if you killed a guy and put him in your <laughs> university and his name happened to be Jeremy Bentham, I don't think that should count for points. <laughs> Wait, so Ben, was that your guess? Did no, you? it was in, he's a noted moral philosopher as well. Oh. Wait, but you knew but you knew both were correct, but you correct. decided to I didn't know which feature of Jeremy Bentham was the answer, but well, I, but I knew you, who he you, was. You, you <laughs> must have known that no one was gonna just riff that his body was preserved in a I don't know. Why am I, why am I yelling at you? The college dude. <laughs> okay. I didn't write that answer. That's all. That's just fault. Of well, course, look, he's I, the smartest person up here, man. Uh, he redesigns colleges, man. Don't I be know. mad at him. Well, that's why it complicates Balderdash because, like, te- like if we didn't have him up there, we, we here we wouldn't know he was a noted moral philosopher. In which case, Brandon and Ben, ben both would have technically guessed wrong, but we because Ben's up here, we know that Ben guessed right along with Brandon. I don't know how to score this. Well, who gave the right answer? The who right wrote exactly. It. Who wrote it? Did because oh. you wrote spaghetti, right? I, oh, oh, oh. Well, so I, you I wrote, wrote the noted moral philosopher. So you get three points but for I also having guessed wrote, that he, written that. Answer. He was buried in the. And then you get two points for that. I think. Oh, I think we're tied. Right, oh. so you're so familiar with Jeremy Bentham that you were like, chose, that you were writing, you're like, well, my, he's my answer. Also, oh yeah, so I, so I think six. you win. Oh right, wow. okay. And that's how we treat guests, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know that's what? Give him 900 points. <laughs> well, yeah, I think he gets seven points for the game. Ben Nelson has won oh. Balderdash <laughs> and America. That, that's going to go on my tombstone. I'm sure. Now, Ben, your prize is you get to tell us. You get to spend the end of this podcast telling kids out there and 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 uh, like like how do they what if they want to if they if they're interested in what you've been talking about like what where do they go? D- d- dot com wise, geography wise, <laughs> like what what do they do to to get sucked into your to your black hole of advancement? So uh, if if you if you are uh, if you are so inclined, you can you can just type Minerva into Google. It'll it'll come up. But uh, you can go to M-I-N-E-R-V-A. Minerva N E R V A. M I. That's how dumb we've become. Is that if you type the name of this Roman goddess into into Google, the first thing that will come up is the guy who's using it for his educational program. Sometimes Wikipedia. Wikipedia will will outrank us, but we're, we're one one ver, one or two. She's uh, Athena. She's the Roman version of she's Athena. She's the Roman right? version of Athena and the inspiration for our constitution. So and the goddess of wisdom. Um, but so that yeah, just just start googling Minerva and the, the or, or go to MinervaProject dot com. This or, is for people in particular who are like like look, man, I've had it. I want to p- participate in this Moonraker project educationally. I want to become a super, super thinker. And, like, I don't trust the current system, even whether or not I can afford it. It fucking right. is going to end with me in a drip pan of society yeah. or president. Yeah. <laughs> These are for people who believe that training your mind is as important as, you know, athletes think training their bodies are. Uh, so if you think that training your mind is important, Minerva is where he should be. Excellent. And, and Josh Andrasky, we just brought back because he was an awesome guest last time. And we actually, I want to have Josh back regularly just to tell us about shit that like uh, would normally make us sad, but we're going to turn it into little games and things. But we didn't yeah. have a t- chance to do that this time. I'll be back. We just uh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. you coming back, and I appreciate you guys tangling and not not dismissing each other, even though you had some disagreements. It was interesting to hear you guys talk for a second. I felt like I might be a, 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 a an award worthy uh, uh, cable access host. <laughs> I, like I, 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 hear, I hear there's a certain PBS uh, <laughs> interview show that's now as a vacancy. So, <laughs> um, yeah, but so, yeah, thank you both for coming by and uh, and and everybody out there. What did we learn this week? Give Andy Dick two minutes and uh, and he will break your heart and he could change your life. <laughs> At least add some lyrics. Thanks for coming.
see Dan down. Yeah, see, you guys laugh, but once Moby gets a hold of these recordings, he's going to add a beat, and this is going to, and Andy's going to be suing him. All right. Uh, well, thank <laughs> Shit. All right. Uh, are we going out on? Uh, we're going out on a beat. Yeah. Well. Or oh. Well. I think we're. I mean, we're so. We're done. We could just thank people. Do you have a yeah. list of people to thank? Do you have it written? Or I anything? don't have a list of people to thank. I think you. I think you. Off the top of my head, I would say people, thank Dan. Chris Baruff for being the director. Love you, Chris Baruff. Thank Zach McKeever for doing for directing all the audio. Thanks Sarah yeah. Hill for for doing a bunch of shit that we should probably have her up here that, and explain everything that she does. It's true. Uh, I keep I keep I keep dismissively saying she's the person that hands me all the titles. What about Steve Levy? Steve Levy's wandering around out there. Zach, the audio maniac. Uh, I do want to thank. Uh, yeah, we already thank Zach. I, I do want to thank uh, uh, Zach? Nolan, uh, who <laughs> continues to try to permit the the castle so that we can have an audience back in here one day, uh, yeah. while while wrangling everything. And, uh, and 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 special thanks to Brian Baldinger. Yes, or always. Baldinger, depending on whether you're from Norwegia or not. Uh, for putting us in touch with Ben and uh, um, uh, I don't know who else. There's probably some interns that are like gonna sue us later. And... Oh, Andy Dick. Thank you, Andy Dick. For thank you. I, I think didn't. That's it. That... <laughs> He's hitting a wood with a hammer. For God's sake. <laughs> thank you, Andy Dick. Uh, we'll we'll see you next week. Right. It's gonna be our Christmas episode. It's gonna be amazing. I promise. We're gonna we're gonna go all have out a wonderful for Christmas. Christmas time. Thank you. Good night. This is the end of Harmon Town. I've been Brandon Johnson. We'll see you next week. Drive slow and don't take chances. Don't. Yeah.